Serana Fez show. Uh, Pepper Hicks has some, I guess, awful news for us yeah. about your giant bottle of Chivas. What's wrong? Well, uh, two nights, um, end of last week, I had a couple drinks out of it. Don't make you a bad person. Thank you. And then I was like, hmm, I have a giant bottle of liquor here out in the open. I haven't brought it home yet. So right. I mark it with a marker, the level of the liquor. And yesterday, I pick it up to check it out, and there's at least two or three drinks missing. Someone's right. been sneaking into our fucking office and stealing that giant bottle of liquor. Now, maybe part of the reason is that it's been said on this show, if something is on your desk and it's a fun treat, that it's for everyone. No. We've gone through this for our candy stealing, and now you've lost your liquor. Here's what you need to do. Yeah. you got to pick that liquor up, wrap your arms around it, and take it home. I know, but why can't I trust the liquor to be here? I have to pull tape now to see who fucking stole this liquor from me. Well... Do you blame anyone that's working late nights? They're an alcoholic. They see, uh, they see an Olympic swimming pool full of liquor. Why wouldn't they help themselves to it? Well, yes, I'll give them a little you know, credit for like, all right, I see a giant bottle of liquor. Sure, this guy's <laughs> not going to fucking notice. Okay, but still. No, you're not fucking safe. You're not. This if is you, ridiculous. It's an asset. Would you leave your fucking cash there? <laughs> Would you leave your cash sitting there? No, I would. I would not let leave well, just money sitting there. Uh, you've basically done that. By the way, people want to know how you've been able to do this. Mighty Dad was the big winner when? Yesterday? Yes. He got his prize today. He's 2,300 miles away. I want these people to get these Christmas presents. Because if they're going to re-gift them, come on. you got to get it quickly. I don't want them to be a fucking up shit's creek without a gift to give. Come on. You went on search, search, hurry up and search. You're going to get your shit ridiculously quick. Why are you angry about I'm that? I'm not. I'm just letting people know. Is this happy? Is this proud? This is happy. Search, search, hurry up and search. You win. You get your shit immediately. Then do this for yourself. Yes. Pour your fucking liquor into a trash bag <laughs> and then fucking ship it to yourself. Because you can't, idea. you're not handling your own life. <laughs> just put it in a, just get some gallon fucking jugs and put it in there. <laughs> um, every, this is, it's an awful and we live in a world. I told you honestly today, it's an unfair world. Now, do you think it's anyone on the staff? Do I you think, think that so. they're liquor stealers? I don't think they're liquor stealers, but I really want to start doing an investigation here to find out who the fuck took my shit. Well, I, And there's a camera right outside our office, I believe. I, can I just try to wake you up to something? Okay. So let's suppose we go down the hall. Yeah. We go to the, say the bosses. <laughs> I'll say to them, hey, my producer has seven gallons of liquor... <laughs> In in the office that he takes hits <laughs> off of, and someone else has been drinking. They might look at you like, well, wait, before we find out who stole it, what is wrong with your producer? <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about it, buddy. So I'm, I'm the victim here. Don't ask questions. <laughs> See, the thing is, you might look like a lunatic for having that much alcohol <laughs> in your office. This ain't fucking Mad Men, all right? This ain't 1962 and we're in a fucking ad agency. Um... Oh, here's here's the gentleman of uh, uh, the pit doc who got this for you. Hey, PD. Hey, Pepper. Yes, am I to understand that I gave you a bottle of booze and you left it in the same building that Dave McDonald can get into? You oh, know Jesus. it's Dave behind this. <laughs> and I don't blame him. That fucker would catch a train to come up here for free alcohol. And a giant bottle of alcohol. But, pack. you know, uh, also look around at the other people in the bu in the building. Uh. Mad Dog, uh, Jay Thomas. These are hard drinking people, radio people. They came up in this industry. This um, here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Fez. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, Chris, now you kind of know what it feels like for, you know, when you're stealing from all these record companies and all these movie studios. And now you know the feeling that they feel. How's it feel? It's not the same feeling. I'm not bootlegging fucking liquor here. Uh, well, Lady Trucker wants to help out. Lady Trucker. Hey, Pepper, have you checked the uh, strength of the stuff in the bottle? Somebody might have colored the water. And oh, stuck. shit. So what do you think is in the in the bottle? Oh, somebody just put water in it and a little coloring. A little uh -huh. tea, yeah. Tea. First of all, don't be racist and bring up colored water. Water is water. Yeah, I, I, did, I was at a house party once and found a bottle of Grey Goose and just drank it all and filled it with water. Mm -hmm. like Alcoholics do that, yeah. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> this is nothing. No, They're never going to know. Uh, every housewife slash mom has said that. Fez Watley, what's going on with you over there? I, I haven't heard you all day. And then during the break, you read that commercial like you couldn't be any happier. Um, it was just, uh, just a freezing up day. But why are you so happy when you read a commercial? Well, I just want to make sure that people, you know, enjoy their pajama grams. I understand that. But that wasn't my point. Why, what is it about the commercial that makes you so happy? Well, it's that I, at least then, I'm not freezing up. The words are in front of me. So it's something. What happened to you doing your, what do what we used to call those bits that you ran for a week? Oh, the self-contained bits. What happened to them? I didn't think they were working. I didn't think people liked them. Why? Well, they didn't write to you and say, I like them? Yeah, it just, it just seemed like, it just felt in my head like it was not working. But you think uh, pajama grams are working for listeners? Well, the pajama, I, I don't know if they're working for the listeners, but it's, it was just something that I knew I was able to do. Right, but what I'm saying is, why is it so, what is it about that? Um, just where it feels like, uh, just one thing that I can pull off. Where there's like at least a slight bit of comfort there. Uh huh. Where, yeah, you know, it's, it's something I can, you know, try to do right. You just want to read pajama grams or we'll just find you, you know, spots for you to read during the show? Um, no, no, I, I, I'll be good. It's, uh. I know that you're going to be good, but what's the point? The thing is, what is it, what are you looking for? To read stuff? No, just, um, just places where I can f just feel a little bit more comfortable. So today's not a comfortable day. No. But go back and listen to your pajama gram. You were incredibly comfortable. You gave him an extra 20 seconds. Yeah, that I didn't even realize happened. Well, m my point is maybe you want to be the pajama gram spokesmodel. It was just, it was something that I knew I, I could, uh, out of just all the fumbling and bumbling today, mm -hmm. it was something that I knew I could pull off. It was fantastic. But why don't you write up some of the things like you used to write up and do it the same way? I can go back to doing that. I just didn't think it was, I didn't think that was working either. You're all upset. Yeah. Something yeah. up? Um, just, no, it was, I was doing good and then just had like a, a freak out before the show and I had a, another stupid nervous moment in the subway station. Uh huh. Where I took a tumble down the escalator, which was uh, a little bit frightening. Why? Well, because it, it was, you know, mo I was towards the bottom, so I didn't have a long fall, but it was still, you know, that's where you get chewed up down at the bottom. Mm. Kind of went down, the, the arm, uh, you know, the handrail is moving, so trying to get myself back up. And I just have a, I have a kind of a fear of escalators anyway. Well, you take the steps. Um... God, it was just, it was, it, it was, I was, I was running a little bit late and was like walking down. I should have just stood still on it. I thought I had it under control. Let me tell you, you stand still on the, on the steps, you ain't fucking going anywhere. Yeah. You gotta walk. What? So the question was, why didn't you take the steps if you have a fear of elevators? Well, that, to me, it's the same thing. You really have a fear of steps. Yeah, where it's where it's those, you know the the subway station where I'm at uh, on Roosevelt Island, mm -hmm. just really long escalators, really long steps. There's an elevator. Yeah, that's uh, that's the that's a tuna can that thing. All right, this is my fault. I should have told you to move off of Roosevelt Island. No, you did. Mm. Um, Aaron, you're on the Run Fest show. Wouldn't it be funny if Fez fell on the escalator and just fell forever? That's not going to happen, can it? I think uh, eventually I would hit. Don, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, Pepper, I got a cure for your alcohol. What's feeling. that? <laughs> you don't believe yeah, me. Yeah, you get, you get the same color of pop as your liquor and a roll of mento, and you figure out how a way to put it in there without it. So when they open it up, it just drops down and blows all over them. Yeah, I'm not going to fucking blow up all my goddamn liquor just to catch some asshole. I'm probably just going to take it home once I stop being so fucking lazy. What, what, you know, here's the thing. Um, you are... It's Christmas season. Yeah. You've got all the liquor. Why aren't you sharing? 
Why don't you just act like, hey, if anybody wants any liquor, Merry Christmas. Come on, this is everybody. Way back. Throw a house party and, inside our yeah, office. I mean, you didn't buy the liquor. True. But, you know, they could have asked that I would have given. But just mm. the steal and the fucking black of night, I don't like that. Well, what should they have called you at home? Dude, can I have some liquor? Sure, I wouldn't mind it. I'll take calls at all times. Uh, Neil, you're on manifest. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. You got to be the most patient man in the world, but... Fez, you said you was looking for something that's more comfortable for you. You think maybe the nut hut? Time to take the medicine and be comfy? Well, wasn't real comfortable at the nut hut either. Did you play dodgeball, though? Or kickball, rather? Dodgeball. They fucking was throwing balls at other retards. Don't fucking keep them in there forever. I would think if they came up with a game like that, i go, I know what you're fucking doing. You're trying to make me fucking look crazy. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Did I ever take you to the zoo? No, there was no why don't you field check trips. In a, why don't you check in a, over Christmas break? Because I, I already made plans to head to Florida. Oh, good. There's always a lot of good stuff for you down there. There's a the beach. There's your mom. There's your old bedroom. Let's go to Fort Lauderdale. I had some great times down there. Did you videotape your cell phone? Fucking Hicks will throw it up on YouTube. We'll put out some before you after it. And uh, we'll add just this sound effect as you're going down. <laughs> and I'll just be like, old man farts all the way down fucking escalator. Um, here's uh, Rich. You're on running Hey, I just want to find out if Fezzi yelled out and screamed like Nathan Lane in the bird cage when he fell. Did you do a scream, Fez? Yeah, I believe there was a pretty good scream. <laughs> How'd it go? Do an impression. I think it was, ah! Hmm. Um, it's not a funny scream, though. It's actually kind of a painful sounding one. Kevin, you're on my face. Pepper, maybe the people that are taking your uh, liquor are the people that listen to Fez's philosophy on the candy bowls. If it's in the office, it's available. I brought that up to both of them, but neither bit. It is the same exact thing, that if you had yeah. candy up there... And people were helping themselves. You know, it's some fucking janitor. And what do you want to do? Get him fired? No, the I don't guy's want to get fucking, him fired. Two o'clock in the fucking morning, the guy's fucking wiping down all these windows, which are all over, and vacuuming up shit. Let him take a fucking shot of shivers, like a gentleman. I'm going to write a note. Call me before drinking on the fucking liquor, and I'll put my number there. Why don't you take your fucking alcohol home? It's fucking a giant bottle. It's seriously, ridiculously giant. I got to get a bag to put it in. How much do you think that liquor bottle costs? Uh, a few hundred bucks. All right. Why don't you put it in your fucking arm, go take a, f a fucking $11 cab ride, and live like a gentleman <laughs> drinking fucking shivers in the back the whole time. Oh, wow. That's that's nice, drinking and driving. You'll All be right. in the back. Oh, You'll okay. be in the back like Arthur. <laughs> Play the fucking Arthur's theme. <laughs> Go through the park. Will you bet him in? You know how I love the park. They're fucking make, remaking that with the English guy that Brand. everybody loves. I'm really fucking nervous about it, dude. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I love that little Dudley Moore being Arthur. Oh, fuck yeah. And I don't have any hate for Russell Brand. I wish him nothing but good things. But, Russ, you're not Arthur. Fucking Dudley Moore's Arthur. Yeah, it's, it's it's. What's next? You're gonna be ten. He's also in the Tempest. Go through the park, Bitterman. That could be you, Hicks. You, you could be living that way, sure. That's classy, though. Yeah, so is Freddie Blassie. Uh, Jim, you're <laughs> on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Pepper, you think that that dirty immigrant uh, custodian put his lips on the bottle and just drank out of the jug? No, he's got to get a cup. I mean, it has the fucking poorer thing. First of all, let's look at it this way. It w you couldn't turn Hicks off if you thought someone fucked that bottle. <laughs> oh, it's jizz whiskey. Look at these beautiful little girls coming by. Oh, no, here's oh, some, there's some random yay, dudes. Yay, yay. Yeah, it's radio. Woo! Yay. Yeah. Maybe when you graduate from high school, you'll, you won't have to work either. You'd be like us. Get fucked up. Why is there one guy with all those uh, hot young girls? I don't know. Maybe he's like the gay friend. It's like that new show, uh, got Girls Who Like Boys Who Like Boys. You know, there couldn't be a stupider fucking show. <laughs> and then I noticed Sundance is buying, like, bus time, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, billboards. And I'm like, what? 
all it's saying is some people have friends. Yeah. No, yeah, this this thing has gotten ridiculous um, coverage or whatever, uh, PR. It's it's just about, oh, we're girls were friends with gay guys. All right. Mm. Congratulations. You got a gay friend. Yeah. I mean, what is the big deal? Why is this? Why is this freak? Some people have friends they don't have sex with. This is a unique subculture of fucking American life. What? There's gay, oh, there's gay guys in New York and they're friends with straight women. Now let's give them a fucking camera crew. Does this make you mad, Shivas? Well, but the Shivas makes you mad, yeah. This fucking TV show annoys me. Frank, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, Ron, uh, Fez, did the old lady help you up after you fell? Ah! Uh, <laughs> old. I got up myself. Uh, Joe, you're on the Run of Fez. Hey, Fez, since it's such a burden to go out in public and work, why not work from home and you can just phone it in like you've been phoning it in for the last couple of years, man? Wow. Where'd that fucking come from? Someone who really doesn't have any holiday spirit. Just a little bit of a Scrooge out there. What's going on with BC today? Just all wound up again. No. You? Yeah, I, yet again. Because you fell down the escalator? I didn't think that did it because... I felt like I shook that off, and then just the panic ensued. And that's where it went wrong. Why don't you do a fezzatorial? Um, I, I don't have one prepared. You haven't done them for a while, right? Right, yeah. And then you didn't replace them? Right. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez, eight six six Ron Zero Fez. It is the Ron and Fez show, um, and there's always so much fun. Uh, we never know what we're going to get. Sometimes Radio Shark calls himself Roger. Yeah, this is Radio Shark. Ah! <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. You got busted by the. No, I didn't. That's what I called. Under. Maybe your buddy Maverick over there is trying to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's running the phones today? Steve yeah, find out who's Tyson. Steve Tyson. Uh, Steve Radio Tyson, Shark. come on in here. Steve Tyson, did he call in as Roger or did he call in as Radio Shark, as you are now claiming? Well, what do you think he's going to say? He works for you. No, but uh, the thing is, did I. What? Now. Did he call in as Roger or Radio Shark? Oh, Roger. Oh! <laughs> Steve oh. Tyson rules. Smile, you son of a don't. bitch. Oh! oh. Wow. That was amazing. You have dominated him this semester. I really have destroyed him. It's, wow. uh, it's been a personal mission of mine. I'm very happy with it. You heard Fez had a bad day, right? Yeah. Did I shock you? That Fez had a bad day? No, we all have bad days. Oh, that's true. You write some uh, material about Fez falling down the escalator? No, I didn't do that. Not not yet. I don't think Why don't you do it? Why don't you go back there? Why don't you go back in your area? Come back with a three-minute chunk about Fez falling down the escalator. Okay. All right. Fez, did it occur to you you might want to come up with an amusing story about falling down the escalator? Yeah, I guess so. But You know what? I you're feeling bad today. I should have had, had you explain to all those people whose children are born with diseases or are lost kids yeah. how bad life can really be. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. What's wrong? I don't know. You know what? I want to get you as a fucking new shirt because right now you have a giant hole with a few threads. Yeah, Laura from a booking, I saw her uh, staring at it and looking. Just she didn't bring it up, but she just <laughs> stared at the giant hole in my shirt. See, what happened was I was shotgun in a car one night, pissed drunk, smoking a cigarette, and the cherry. I went to ash it out the window, and right. the cherry f went onto my gut. Right. I didn't that notice it. When things like this happen to people, they throw that shirt away. Hey, look, I they like don't the wear shirt. It to, yeah, they don't wear it to work. <laughs> you might need a vest with it just to cover that up. You would be like one of those uh, waitresses who comes up with reasons. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm wearing the apron because I think it looks great. Oh, yeah. Uh, look who it is, our good buddy Cigars and Scotch. Hey, um, Hicks, I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, thank um, you. About a year and a half ago, I dropped an entire bottle, and I... I still think about it at times, oh. but it, it gets better. 
I it hope, absolutely I gets better. I don't, I don't my see friend. it getting better because I lost about two drinks worth of over time. Liquor. Not right away, but every day you think about it a little less. I don't know. Maybe I'll get some Hang in there, man. cheaper whiskey to numb the loss. I'm ashamed of you. You need to give yourself a pep talk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sit down, look into that mirror pepper, and give yourself a pep talk. Things are going to go get better there, buddy. And remember, in the early 90s, you did like MTV and videos. Here's... Uh, Anthony, you're on running Fez. Yeah, hey, buddies. Hey, Fez, I don't know if you remember when uh, Billy Staples fell on the escalator. You had about an hour's worth of material by, you know, showtime. So I'm sure you can just take all those thoughts and memories and just work it into a bit. Very interesting point. We had tons of fun when Staples fell down and he actually hurt himself. And we laughed about it for two days. Oh, you fell down and you start crying and you want to come in and be sad about it. Yeah, well, I'm not planning on leveling any sort of lawsuit against the uh, Transit Authority. But if you were, maybe we'd have something to joke about. Yeah, it's, um... I think it's just, uh, basically, I have to go back to learning how to tie my shoes. Your shoes were untied? Um, when I got to... I didn't, I didn't think they were. I think one became untied as I came, went down. But when I got... Uh, yeah, I did have an untied shoe. So if that's caught on videotape in the station. Let me play a little station. psychological thing with you, because I just noticed something. In your family, who had the power position? Uh, I, uh, my mother. Of the whole family? Oh, yeah. When the extended family would get together? Because I think it was different than that. I think it was the grandmother. I think she was the matriarch of your family. Um... Yeah, probably the one that you knew was definitely... That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Do you think that you're trying to become your grandmother? You're doing a lot of the same kind of stuff. Everybody has to watch out for you. She had this thing, and she would sneak candy and stuff, and everybody would laugh about it, and, you know, everybody would come visit her. You couldn't step on her feet. Maybe you've got this thing that you want to be a grandmother. I had never thought of that. It uh, that never occurred to me that I would want to be my grandmother, especially. When you, well, you're kind of living like a grandmother now, right? Yeah. And the whole thing about you falling down is, you know, you brought it in like we were all going to be alarmed about it, and you're upset. And who else has that happened to besides a grandmother? I mean, I, I remember being a kid. Old grandma fell, fell down. I remember. So I fell down constantly. Fucking, you know. I'm Get together, like, lady. Come yeah. On. Uh, when you're a little kid, you can't understand why elderly people make yeah. a big deal about falling down. So? I get knocked off my pins all the time. <laughs> but, but, and you're not acting like, hey, I got a funny story for you. I fell down the steps like an idiot. You know what I mean? It's uh -huh. not funny to you. It's sad and it's scary. Yeah, it was, it was, it was frightening at the moment because I didn't know if I was going to get chewed up. Right. But my point is this. It's nothing that a fucking, you know, a guy would fucking care about. Yeah, all right. Maybe I can... you're transforming into your grandmother. That's very... I'll bring that up to the therapist, because it's... Um, you say that you'll bring these things up, but you never come back with any of my theories and give them to the therapist. Do you ever give them my yeah, yeah, yeah theory? What was your yeah, yeah, yeah theory? That you say yeah, yeah, yeah every time that we have meetings, like you're going to do stuff and then you don't? It's as agreeable and I'm seeing it as deflection? Oh, yeah, I've yeah I've brought that up. I don't believe him now. He's even doing the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what's he uh -huh. say? Uh, he's like, it's that the fact that because I've what happens is I start to freeze up, you know, in a meeting as well as other places. And he's like, it's too much noise going on inside your head. What noise? Just the 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 uh, the panic sound. Mm. What what what's the panic sound? Where it's. Does it sound like that in there? No, not really like a foreign ambulance. Uh, uh, what is the noise in your head? It's just where it's like, think, 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 think. Think of something to say. Say something. Say anything. Just as you spit something out. And it just it gets loud and repetitive like that. So uh, when, when do you get that? Um, I get it like all the, like, any freeze up on the air, any, any sort of freeze up in a meeting. Why don't you just say those things out loud? Well, that seems equally as nuts as anything else I do. Equally would be different, at least, right? Mm-hmm. Let's talk to Crazy Voice. 
Let's hear from the crazy voice. Say something. Say something. Anything. Say it now. Why can't you think of anything? You're just having a conversation. Why be so stupid? You can do this. Say something. Say anything. Give me something to say. Get, say something, please. You're not talking. Would you please to hurry up and think? Hurry, hurry, hurry. That's what's going on. And it uh, and it just uh, it goes on and on and on. Where it's uh, now it's just uh, you. Well, you did it. You you spit out a sentence and then it was uh, over because you can't think of anything to say. You're just freezing up. You're all locked up. I like that guy. Yeah, I like that guy. He's nutty. You know, I have a little voice in my head too. It goes like this: Come on, three o'clock. Three o'clock. Come on. Come on, motherfucker. I'm just going to switch the clock right now. I'm going to switch it to three. Now what's going on inside? Now it's, uh... Oh, way to go. You made yourself cry on the air again. Very professional. Nice work. I like that guy. Yeah. Seems like he's really judgmental. He reminds me of Hicks. Sure. Ron, is your, what is your, what's your voice say when after 3 o'clock? Is, or is it just, just go away? Please don't be 11 tomorrow. Please don't let 11 come. Don't let 11 get here. You want to hear my inner voice? It goes like this. Speak up, Hicks. You better say something. Come on, Hicks. Oh, you're not Jesus, saying anything. I'm sorry. You're Jesus, just no, now you're well, yelling. Now you're yelling for no that, reason. Now, just, now you look stupid. Now well, look I'm at you. Just, you look I'm dumb. To write you look dumb, I, Hicks. You got nothing. At all. You don't on. have anything I'll, at all. I have, have plenty of stuff. I can say stuff. You're not doing anything. I'm losing my fucking liquor. That's not good to fucking talk about. Who knows? When I want to hear Nutty Voice, I'll just go like this. Nutty Voice! Say something. You just got called on. Nutty Voice, get out there. Just do something. Do something, please. Please, 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 just think of something. Um, But then he eventually stops, too. Yeah, maybe he has a voice inside his head. All right, Anthony writes into us, when, Ron is say when Fez is saying, say something, he means Ron say something. No, I mean me say something. Well, why don't, why don't you be your inner voice, and instead of your inner voice talking to you, have it point its fucking stuff at me. Fez isn't saying anything, Ron. Fez isn't I, saying I, anything. What I, I want to say is have, it, have the problem with me. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, under, I'm not figuring this out. In other words, out. instead of having your inner voice critical with Fez, have your fucking inner voice critical with Ron. But I'll take the Fez's position. If you got a problem here in a voice, aim it towards Ron. All right, it's um, uh, Fez isn't talking. That's not what I'm talking about. I I can't. I, instead of you putting your and I'm talking to inner voice now. Instead of you putting your frustration towards Fez, put your frustration towards Ron. Okay. I, all right. All right. Go ahead, inner voice. Um. Uh, uh, Ron, it's, uh, Ron, um, I, I, I can't think of a What's the fucking problem, inner voice? Not so fucking tough now, are you? Where are you, inner voice? Yeah, it's, uh, Fuck with Fez again, inner voice, and I'll fucking stomp your shit. All right, now let me hear inner voice, uh, start on Fez. Um, all right, Ron just stuck up. Ron had to stick up for you again, and uh, to me, the inner voice, and you're still not saying anything. You're still sitting here Who the fuck just are panicking. You? Hey, what I tell you about starting up Fez? What I tell you? What I tell you, inner voice? I'm going as crazy as him now, Hicks. I'm going as crazy as him. Uh, you're weird. Fuck yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Jason, you're on a Fez. Fez, think, think, hurry up and think. Think, think, hurry up and think. Think, 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 hurry up and think. You could start a new game, just you and your inner voice, and you're there trying you to come go. up with answers. Um, Ow. Let me, um, I'm going to do an impression of you now, Hicks's inner voice. 
I like drugs and alcohol. Drink, drink, hurry up and drink. Drink, drink, drink hurry up and drink. drink. What would you do if you couldn't drink and do dope? Oh, fuck. It would be a lot of chain smoking and... And smoke. I'm going to throw smoke in. Oh, what? I have no fucking clue what I would do with downtime. Or just, like, just... I don't know what I would do with myself if I couldn't smoke. Or and on top of not drinking and fucking, you know, drugging. I had to th come up with some sort of hobby, or maybe join a social club or something. Those exist. Social club. I don't know. Uh, Joe, Long Island, you're on Fez. I think you should throw a Chinese star at Rod at Fez's inner voice. Hmm. Uh, Brendan, you're on the Run of Fez show. Good afternoon, buddies. Uh, I just read a book recently called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by a guy named Mark Hatton. I read that book a couple years ago. The Eng English writer? Yeah. Yeah, the um, the guy had Asperger's, which have we, we checked on you with that, right, Fez? Do you have Asperger's? No, I've asked the psychiatrist about it uh, on more than one occasion. Is there a test you can take? Um, I believe there's a test, but he said that I didn't have it and that I there's no need to take the test. And I'm like, I and I I almost begged. I'm like, are you sure? Because something's screwy in my head. Um, Todd, you're on the face. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, Hicks. Don't worry, man. Booze are like women. They'll make more. Fezzy, what's the what do you, what do you call your voice? <laughs> He wants to know if you got a name for your inner voice, Fez. No, it's just uh, it's just the voice that's there. I think it's also called Fez. What about Petey Joe? Might be a perfect name for him. Like, hey, Petey Joe. It's a what very up, friendly P name. What up, PJ? Um, here's uh, Mark. You're my Fez. What's up, buddies? Yeah. Hey, Fez, quick question. Mm -hmm. After you uh, eventually die, would you be willing to donate your brain to science? How about before you die? Because you're not using it, why don't you just give it over and let science take a look at it? They should probably at least get some photos of it. I'll donate my fucking body to science. Fuck it. I don't know if they'll actually want it, though. It's kind of fucked up at this point, and I'm kind of, you know, somewhat young. Uh, this fucking Christmas season is always so fucking crazy. Um, and it's also the time of tipping. And we're going to bring an expert in on tipping a little bit. But uh, it's phenomenal how much tipping you're supposed to do this time of year. Yeah, I have I mean, I, there's one person I tip, but I know I should tip more. And I, but I just don't have the cash. I just fucking tip my super, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, but I know I know there's more people I got to be fucking Well, you got to tip your super if you yeah. live in New York. Yeah. How much are you going to give them? Uh, probably, I don't know, 100. 100 for the year. Give them a quick 100? Yeah. Go like this. Look. <laughs> Toilet backs up. You're the fucking guy. Look at me. You gotta fucking take care of this, cause here's look, here's Mr. C. And maybe you know, there's that hole in my window that the tarp's over. You could fix, buddy, huh? Bob, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, buddies, how you doing today? Good. Hey, Fezzy, uh, I was just uh, wanted to ask you a question. Do you enjoy coming and doing the show? Like, is it fun for you, or is it something that you dread coming in for? I mean, when I can get myself calmed down, I, I do. I absolutely enjoy it. So it's it's worse when you're excited and it's it, you enjoy the show more when you're just calm and that. Right, yeah. It's just that I get really panicky twenty four hours a day. Is it it doesn't matter where I'm at when this thing pops up. You think it was a panicky at his apartment the other night? Yeah. I think at first when he first came in it, it, it was okay, but as the night went on, the panic set in. What made you panic more, Fess? Um, it was just I was like um it was one of those things where it's like it Something didn't feel right at the party, and I couldn't put my finger on it, and I and I did start to panic a couple of times. But I also think the fact that it was Sunday night also did it to me, even though I had people over, because Sunday night just really, really gets to me. It start it starts to it starts to build up. Hmm. Funny stuff. Here's Fred, Long Island. You're on Run Fest. Thanks, Six. Hey, Ron, do you think stem cells could be coaxed into becoming comedy cells? Oh, my blow God. Me, blow me. Yeah, right. He beat you. He beat you, kid. Get your ass in here. You celebrated earlier. Come on. And now Fred beat you. And blow on, me is Tyson. not the thing to say at Christmas time, Radio Show. Yeah. 
You, you, your ass is uh, glued to that fucking thing. Just watching. Let's go, big man. Come on, Tyson. You How did he beat up, you? Didn't you? I didn't even. I, I have no idea what happened just there. You don't know why you got in trouble. Was, was there a radio shark? He got through. Yeah. yeah, there's a new. It was a new. It was a new number, Steve Tyson. What the hell are you doing? Fucker, this guy. I now have four numbers for the radio shark. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger boat. Have Which you ever called any of his numbers back? I should. How's he got all these numbers? He's using friends' phones. He's like a fucking drug dealer. He's just buying fucking disposable cell phones. <laughs> and yes, one day we did try calling him back multiple numbers, and eventually this he just took him off the hook, or whatever. That's just fucking shut him down. It's fucking. He's hysterical. great. Well, he fucking beat you. Where's your stand up? On uh, Fez's escalator. Yeah. Uh, where's Fez at? Should I do? You want to do it to him? Actually, maybe not. He got out and walked out of the room when you came in. Okay. So um, let's bring him in because we're waiting for the guy to talk about tipping. Uh, and then two twenty, we're gonna go with search. Two twenty, search. search, search. Hurry up and search. Um, Fez, he wants to do a stand up for you. Okay. All right. Let's see what you got. I'm supposed to write about your escalator, Fez. You're very talented. Uh, you you impersonate a lot of wrestlers. You do a Ric Flair impression. You've done Goldust, and now Owen Hart. <laughs> that was a fucking joke. <laughs> so that was. was a legitimate joke. Thank you. Can I yeah. end my set there then? Yeah, go ahead. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Go out a winner. Thank you. Hey, yeah. you wrote a fucking joke there. Fuck yeah. All right, Fez, top his joke. Um, let's see. It's uh, There was something down at the bottom of the escalator that was uh, uh, kind of dirty and greasy. No, it was just Fez. Hmm, that's pretty good. I like that. You should have attacked Tyson, it, though. Huh? You should have attacked Tyson, though. That's yeah, kind of turn on Tyson a little yeah. bit. You're the fucking Owen Hart, not me. Well, at least I can fit on an escalator. Well, that would be good if you could, though. But you already proved it's a tight fit, and you <laughs> no. rolled down it. That it was a problem. Mm. Where's the inner voice? Think of something to say, Fez. Think of something to what say. What I fucking Think tell of... you in her voice? You still fucking starting up and doing it quietly? Why don't you do this, Fez? Let me talk to real Fez now. All right. Anytime in her voice starts up, just say to me, it's happening, Ronnie. Okay. And I'll fucking go and get him and choke him out. I'll choke fucking in her voice out. Thank you. Hicks, why I'm choking it? Yeah. You start kicking Fez in his balls. Okay. We'll get to the fucking bottom of this. Yeah, Not in her voice, his balls? All right. You're using the same balls, but okay. Yeah, I'll crush them. Don't worry. I'm serious. Do serious damage that to them. Um, Dave, you're on Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fez. Hey, Hicks. Uh, I think I know how the radio shark got through. Um, I'm, I've never used it, but Google has some random temporary phone number generator program, and uh, I don't know how to trace it. I just have it's just a theory. So I figured I'd call you. Maybe there's a way they can figure out how he's doing that, and then you can spot it before he gets through. Well, thanks for giving Radio Shark the idea. He's still not online. <laughs> I haven't heard of this. Uh, maybe we'll get to this a little later on, but it's time to talk tipping. Um, and there is a, a website that you can go to uh, called WaiterRant. Dot com. This became a very uh, big book. It's Steve Dublonica. Steve Dublonica. Now, he started the uh, Waiter Rant blog in 2004, and it's basically about the lives of waiters and tipping uh, plays a big part of it. Um, the big book was Thanks for the Tip, Confessions of a Cynical Waiter. Uh, but the newest thing is... Uh, is Keep the Change. Keep the Change. It's in stores now. Keep the Change is a clueless tipper's quest to become the guru of gratuity. So if you have any questions on this, if you wonder if there's someone in your life that you should be tipping at Christmas, give us a call. and We'll check on it. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. So let's bring in Steve. Dublonica. I was going to say Dublonica. Hey, Steve was right. I had no idea, but there is a lot of hate mail coming in. Really? People literally saying, I hate Steve. <laughs> Steve's an asshole. I can't take, take Steve's hand out of my pocket. <laughs> uh, but then I went over on the Twitter thing, and I saw Bobby Pantera 
uh, defending the mailman. I think maybe at some point next week we should open up the phones to the people who think they don't get tipped and should. Because the mailman thing tends to be this, we'll give them a bottle of liquor, which I tend to think is tacky. You know what I mean? Like, A, you don't know whether your mailman drinks or not. Yeah. B, suppose everybody on the route does it. How is he supposed to get a fucking 100 bottles of liquor back? And why does he need that much? <laughs> what is wrong with handing someone money? I just get annoyed by the somehow a gift is less obnoxious than money. I don't believe that. Fuck that. Give me the cash. Just give me the cash. Yeah. I don't want that shit. I don't want your dessert that you fucking made yourself. Cake? What? Um, my father is awful with that. What he does, if they've ever had any... Because my parents don't drink. Because I don't care about this story. I want to know something else. What? Did you and Steve grab hands <gasps> at one point during that? Because I passed a note to Chris Stanley... <laughs> That you did. There may have been a little you, hand grab oh, during you. the interview. Now, what exactly happened? Well, um, he said something. I don't even remember what the line was. There wasn't any line worth grabbing hands. And it's like, and then he kind of reached over, you know, down below the console. Why would anyone do this? Whoa. And reached over, and we just kind of grabbed hands at That's... that point. What were you attempting to do? Uh, I thought it was like a high five, or I mean a pound. I thought it was like a pound that I was getting, and at first oh. I completely missed his hand, and, and then there was a grab. Is not a fucking pound. So I'm standing no, here no, 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 now. No. First of all, Fez becomes alive during this interview. It's alive. <laughs> then I looked over and saw doughy to doughy hand grab. I'm fucking giving Fez the big fucking buckwheat eyes. Like, what am I saying? <laughs> And then I write it down, I pass it over to Hicks, Hicks goes to look at Fez like, what the fuck, <laughs> and Fez slides behind a monitor, is shamed or shy boy about it. It was very surprising. Yeah, I was shocked too, I didn't, I mean, that's why it was so awkward on uh, my, you know, on my return. Well, you thought that he tried to grab your hand, or you thought it was a pound, and you grabbed hands by mistake. Right. It was. It was. Um. I thought it was a pound, and we ended up grabbing hands. But I also got a big grin and smile from him as well. So, what were you thinking? Well, I was thinking, uh, Steve. Doe boys on parade is a very nice person. Yeah. What you ever grab fucking hands with Hicks when he's in here? Why not? I don't Why? Want another man's hand. That would be sick thing to you. That would be off-putting. That was very sickening. surprising to me. Disgusting. Very, very surprising. Oh, All right, uh, we're getting ready to rock this uh, today for sure. All right, there's Fez Watley in his hoodie footy, and uh, the only problem, Fez, it's a little Easter Bunny looking, oh, but. It does fit you perfectly. It fits nice. It is It is snuggly, that's for sure. So maybe this is the Linus uh, blanket that you uh, that you need. I am totally going to hope so. I'm totally going to hope so. All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. We do a little thing I like to call... Ichiban. Ichibans. Ichibans. Uh, that is a name that my good friend Dave knows means, uh... Number one! Number one! Number one! Yeah. Ichiban. 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 Means number one. Number one! And... Number one! Means... Ichiban. Ichiban. And that's today's lesson, and don't act like it's not going to be on the test, because it fucking will. I'm going to make a note, then. Yeah. Make a note. Make a crib note, and then you can look at it later. Number and crib it one out. is Ichiban. Now, I'm going to let Hoodie Footy um, give me an Ichiban today. And let's just see if he's the Fez Watley. Just go on one of your your tears, Fezzy, one of your old rants, kind of a Fez tutorial. What do you got for me today? Well, I've got Michael Vick wanting that to... That surprises me. I would not expect Fez would uh, have much interest in Michael Vick. Mm -mm. Well, he's wanting a, a dog. He wants to own a dog again. He thinks it'll help in his rehabilitation. <coughs> Well, yes, we saw that. Well, sure, Dracula. Let's uh, give you the keys to the blood bank as well. 
Who does he think he's kidding? This is like Sylvester the cat being nice to Tweety Bird when Granny's around in the old Looney Tune cartoons. We, you're, he's not supposed to have a dog. And the fact that he says he wants one is just really rubbing it in people's faces. That's really the, at the top of the list of words Michael Vick shouldn't say during his comeback is the word dog. Where it's, he was doing so well, people were welcoming him back. Wait a minute, let me remind them about dogs and what I did to dogs. Oh, that's right, drown and electrocute them. So there's no way he should get a dog. We have no idea. Maybe he starts planning on starting the fight ring all over again. The fight ring? Yes. The the, the dog fighting ring. We don't talk about the dog fighting ring. The second rule of dog fighting ring is we don't talk about dog fighting I thought ring. the second time, uh, the second rule was sometimes you could tell your friends about it, but nobody else. I guess guys you work with. Yeah, guys you work with and that's it. The copy boy. <laughs> that was all I had on it. Oh, well, it was amazing. I loved it. The hoodie footy is popping. The hoodie is Footy is popping. If you throw on some shades, look like the Unabomber. Put it on the shades. Here, here you go, Fez. You look like the comfortable Unabomber. Fez loves to do visual things on the radio. Oh, that's good. That's the fucking Unabomber. Yeah, well, it's comfy un Unabomber. <laughs> well, he's in that shack. He's warm at least now. Psychedelic shack, I like to call it. <laughs> um, what else you got there, Big Cat? <laughs> Um, what happened? The shades? Oh, take them off then, I guess. Take no, off the I'm shades. Fine. Everything was going great. It's the jinx. It's Is it the shades? The yeah, jinx it's walkers. the shades. Let me put the shades on. Oh, boy. I like beer and pills. <laughs> I like your story in Long Island City. <laughs> uh, Bill, you're a man of Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, what does uh, Inner Voice think of that hoodie footy? Inner voice is saying, uh, all right, if as here's a chance to change your state, here's something weird to go with. Just try not to panic through it. Uh, it's, don't, uh, w would you please quit panicking today? There's nothing wrong in here. Everything's fine. There's no need to panic. The sounds, hoodie footy's a little warm. It sounds like inner voice is being nice today. Yeah, really. I'm very, uh, Does aggressive. inner voice want glasses? No, no, the glasses, uh, uh screw Fez up. Why? It makes the room look really, really weird. It's awesome, though. Don't you want everything to look weird? Well, here's the problem. <laughs> the, there's, he's got the blue blockers, and they're scratched. <laughs> so it, too. Whatever. It really looks like you have a bad old color TV where the colors <laughs> faded, and it's all scratched up. <laughs> so Melissa Gilbert was oh, saying... back to Melissa Gilbert. Hell yeah. What did Melissa Gilbert say? She was saying that... Um, that Miley Cyrus wanted to get caught. Right, now, and that's what I said. Miley Cyrus didn't want to get caught. She was just partying in front of her cunt friend. With a flip cam. Flip cam? Speaking of which, did you see the other night? <laughs> Here's the odd thing about show business. That, <laughs> 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 where just a random uh, celebrity can say something, and if, like, if Miley Cyrus woke up this morning and someone said, oh... Guess who in Hollywood is talking about you? Wait, who was that a picture of? That was Miley Cyrus, looking all fucked up. What is that about? Titty almost popping out. Like, here's the thing that kills you about this girl. Why do you have to try to act like, hey, pay attention to me, boys? You're already Miley Cyrus. Yeah, exactly. You got hit albums, hit fucking TV show, hit movies. I got fucked up, too. Look at me. Don't pay attention to the other girls. It's me. <laughs> I think that's photoshopped. Um, there is the Harvard piss mystery going what? on from the library. It's a pistery from uh, the Harvard Library, where there was about thirty-six books that were destroyed because urine was either poured or sprayed on them in the library. All books about uh, gay and lesbian studies. Well, at first this was being investigated as a hate crime, and now Harvard says, no, this was just an accident. One of our librarians knocked over piss on the books. 
So this just makes total sense. Because if you follow the Dewey Decimal System, right between, I think, social sciences and languages, there's pot bottles of piss that are just sitting there on library shelves, uh, obviously open and ready to be knocked over. So what do you say, Fess? Harvest, Harvard is behind us? Harvard is covering this up. Because for 36 books to get destroyed... That's an awful big bottle of piss. It would have to be probably about the size of Chris Stanley Chevis Regal uh, bottle. And just happens to get knocked over in the gay and lesbian section. So much so that these books are just sopping wet and are completely ruined. I think it's probably hard to be a gay and lesbian. And why do gay and lesbians need a book? Can't they just watch the porn? That's just all the study you need to fucking do, right? Just fucking. I didn't even think of that. It's like, let's study how to fuck each other. Because <laughs> we're gay. And lesbian. <laughs> and lesbian. Don't leave them out. Sorry. If this was a piss museum, I could understand a giant bottle of piss being left out. But this. What do you want done? Um, I would like an investigation to be ongoing here, not just the... the are, you, are you willing to pay me and Hicks to go up there and snoop around a little bit? I need some cash. Let's go. Not just let the Harvard campus police say, <laughs> all right, this was, uh, yeah, this was just a piss-spilling accident. I pissed on Yale once. I'll go up there and piss in Harvard. What if we just put up a sign and we'll just say, shh, you're in the library. It'll be like a fucking wordplay. <laughs> that might help. That might help with the investigation. At least it would keep it front of mind. What does Inner Voice think happened? Inner Voice thinks um, that... Uh, say something, Fez. Say something. Say something about what the Inner Voice would say. Just say anything. Well, fucking you're, you're, sitting here panicking yet again. You're the Inner Voice. Why don't you say it for him? Inner Voice thinks that the... Uh, that this is all a cover-up, and it's a cover-up in urine is what's happened. Um, inner voice is like T.O. where he refers to himself in the third person. Oh, yeah. It's great. <laughs> it is great. T.O.'s just trashing everyone on the Bengals, too, which is really funny. Why? Because he's just sit sitting on the owner and the coaches, so it's a 2-11. But here's the thing. <laughs> he's right. Uh, yeah, he's had a great... This is, for once, he's had a really great season, yeah. and no one else has. <laughs> Yeah, it was on his uh, show on Versus, the T.O. show show. He's just him and fucking Chad Ojasenko just shutting How is that show? I don't know. It's okay, I guess. Surprised it's still on. Those guys are fucking rocking reality TV. They are. They're on top of the world, both of them with their two and fucking ten teams. <laughs> Carson Palmer saying you really just can't say anything about it. And I think Marvin Lewis even said, well, he's not exactly wrong. Um... Is Carson Palmer going to be rocking in the new year again this year? Is he going to be there when the ball drops? It's so great to have him back on MTV or NBC or wherever the hell he goes. That's Carson Daly. Uh, I, will, I do. I watch Carson Daly. Uh, I never miss it. Was that a little too fucking hacky for you? That's fucking good. Let, let me ask you something. <laughs> Why? <I'm> <laughs> I know. But I'm just saying this. Are you going to be leaving in a hurry? Is there a fucking smoke in the building? What are you doing wearing a big fucking pea coat? Oh, no. All right. I'll take it off. You make me feel like well, I gotta get out of here at any given I moment. Apologize. What do you got? Fucking dope in the pocket? Uh, not now, right? Uh, Scott, you're on Fez. We're uh, 24 minutes in the show. Whether it's inner voice Fez or actual Fez, Fez is back. He is. He's very much a part of this show today, and I am now thinking it's to do with what I like to call pajama gram fever. Yep, footy hoodie style. Footy hoodie. But I'll tell you what, this does keep you very warm. I think I'm starting to sweat through the uh, fur here. Well, you don't want to say that. I want to act like it's great and comfortable. Oh, my God, the sponsors. <laughs> we should dump out. <laughs> dump out of ourselves. <laughs> Let's dump out of ourselves even talking about dumping out. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, Chuck, what's up, Chuck? You're on the Run Fez Show. Hey, I got an Ichiban for you. Oh, let me hit this then. Uh, Aaron Rodgers missed practice yesterday, and it doesn't look good for today. I don't oh. think he's playing this weekend. Well, uh, I hear that he's not playing this weekend. Sorry, blowhard. And the reason is they get very scared now when you've had two concussions so close together. That's bad. That's bad news. Uh, and it is the problem with concussions, and this happens 
with boxers is like once you get one, you just get them. That's some scary shit. Because it's just it's just fucking scary because your brain's fucking being knocked around your fucking head and it's just happening nonstop. A concussion just means a bruise of the brain, so it's like sprint, uh, like spraining your brain. Oh, fuck! What does inner voice think of that? Um, think of something to say about uh, concussions. Think of something to say about Aaron Rodgers. Just think of something to say. You're sitting here quiet again. It's not acceptable. Would you just please say something? So did Fez answer him? No, Fez is too stupid to have an answer. I'm talking what? to Fez now. No, I'm too stupid to have an answer. Oh, don't you listen to inner voice. Why are you listening to that dick? Fuck the inner voice and its ass. Inner voices have asses and dicks? I think so. Good. At least they have something you can fuck. Well, you got more prepareds, right? Uh, yeah, uh, blah. The kid known as Balloon Boy. Balloon Boy! We ought to do that. The Adventures of Balloon Boy! And every day he's like in a different thing, but he gets in a balloon. And it gets away, but it's really just his dad lying. <laughs> or maybe a bear scratcher will come into effect. God, I love that bear scratcher. Oh, so feels so good. Anyway, what were you saying, Fez? Oh, I was talking about Balloon Boy and his brothers starting a band. <coughs> what does Inner Voice think of this uh, story? Um, Inner Voice is saying this probably wasn't a good idea. Why? Um, yeah, it was just that I was thinking... I'm not talking to Inner Voice. Why are you saying that, Inner Voice? Because um, usually Fez doesn't have good ideas. Well, it's not an idea. It's a p piece out of the news, right? Yeah. An opinion. So uh, the problem is, unfortunately, the dad is going to have to help with this, which means probably another Balloon Boy type stunt to launch the Asian Jonas Brothers here. I, I don't know if we got to the the first part. I think we just you brought a Balloon Boy and we all yelled that Balloon Boy by that. I mean, me. So we didn't understand. What was he doing? Oh, him and his brothers are... Uh, the parents are helping, and the brothers are putting together uh, a very young boy band. No, they already had this. Remember when Balloon Boy happened? Oh, yeah, they had already done some sort of uh, rap video or yeah. something. So now they want to they wanna extend that and get the boys out on the road. Um... Which is going to be scary because the way they got attention in the first place was... Uh, the balloon hoax. Now maybe the kids will be tied to railroad tracks just to launch this music career. You don't believe in rehabilitation. We we started this with Mike Vick. We're in the balloon boy. Once you've sent, you're a sinner. And it's you can't change. Forever. Uh, Silvio, you're running Fez. Fez, I'm hugging you right now through the phone. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Well, you're, uh, you're hugging a hoodie footy. <laughs> it Soft. smells great. Uh, Andy, you're in running Fez. Hey, my name. Yeah. Hey, I have a question for Fed. Uh, hey, Fed. Um, what is the inner voice? Is it a female or a male? Because it sounds a little faggoty. Um, Ow. I'm not even going to answer that. For us to decide? I think it's obvious it's a male. It wasn't obvious. No. Uh, Tom, you're in running Fez. Uh, as far as uh, cigar nerds, are they worse than the wine people who sit and dissect every flavor and aftertaste and the oaky, buttery no, shit? No, I don't think anyone's worse than the wine people. Okay. And this is how fucking stupid the wine people are. That literally, after that um, um, movie that they did a couple years ago about wine tasting. Sideways. Sideways. Yeah, where the guy plays an alcoholic wine taster. And his life is shit. Yeah. Wine tasting went up. <laughs> it's hard. And what should have been some kind of, <laughs> hey, don't hide behind this. No. This is really stupid. Then everybody jumped into it. I think I'm going to try wine now because I get away from being alcoholic. This is great. Uh, they do a lot of wine pairing here in the city now. When you get like a taster's menu, there's a couple oh, yeah. of sips of wine with each mm -hmm. thing. Which is basically a double to down on your fucking bar tab. <laughs> yeah, the fucking wine's ridiculously expensive. It's really expensive. And yeah, in the story now, in Long Island City, there's wine tastings popping up all the time. It's it's just nonstop. I, I don't get it. 
I'll just well, order some Carlo Rossi or some yellow. It's tail. because people are afraid to really just sit down and get fucking hammered. <laughs> <laughs> What's in her voice think of wine tasting? Um, wine taste, uh, think of something to say about wine tasting, Fez. Just say something about wine tasting. Would you please just say something, you fucking idiot? See, he's, uh, he still doesn't have anything to say. Not one word to say. And, uh, he was one of the people that wanted to start to a wine tasting after that movie came out. And then what happened was I decided I didn't like the taste of wine. Let's pound some sangria. Sean, you're in Rana Fez. Yes, Ronnie. Right, Big Buck 3A, my friend. Sounds like Yahoo Fez is back. See you. Uh, Logan, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, boys. You guys were just talking about that movie Sideways. Um, I was out in Napa uh, last year, and um, we were doing wine tastings and stuff, and, and uh, they were talking about how Merlot... Uh, that actually died down after that movie uh, Sideways came out because there's a line in the movie where the guy's like, oh, Merlot is shit. I'm not, I'm not drinking any damn Merlot. And it killed the Merlot business just because the what? guy said it in the movie. Yeah, he, he, uh, there's uh, articles written about this. And then other people are going, you know, there's nothing wrong with that wine. It's just, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, you know, and obviously the movie um, didn't set out to ruin that fucking... That wine is just a line that the character had. Uh, bizarre. Uh, let's go over here to Mike. Mike, you're on my face. Hey, guys. Hey, I'm confused about this inner voice. Is that Fez's inner voice, Ron, or is that your inner voice that's talking to Fez? No, I put my inner voice on the outside, and I consider my inner voice me. Oh, okay, I got you. Um, here is... Uh, Here's Doug. Doug, you're on Fez. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, Ron, if Fezzy keeps listening to this inner voice thing, he's going to end up like Edward Norton from Primal Fear, and he's going to kill everybody in the studio. God, that would be such a relief. Oh, God, that would be sweet, sweet death. Hopefully it'll be on the air if we all get murdered. Be like that fucking retard down in, uh, in fucking Florida that the woman tried to take the purse and hit. I don't know what, how powerful she thought a purse was. <laughs> She was the only one balls, though. <laughs> uh, Jim. Jim, you're on my face. Hey, Ronnie, if, if that voice was in my head, I think I'd cut my fucking head off. Do you get along with inner voice, Fess? No, not ever. Does inner voice ever get along with you? No, no. And it just, it not when the show started today, I thought the inner voice was trying to be supportive. I was going, you can do it. Come on. It's, um, even when it does that, it's more of a disguise of, why are you panicking? Don't panic. There's no reason to fucking panic, you idiot. Let's see a uh, point counterpoint, you against inner voice. Yeah, you don't say anything. You just sit here and you freeze up. You're just a moron. Did you tell them about your hoodie? Well, I have a new hoodie footy. Good. Which hopefully will bring me a little bit of confidence. Nothing works with you, idiot. We've just put on the hoodie footy. We don't know what's going to happen yet. There you go, Fez. We know what's going to happen. You're going to just keep freezing up over and over again. Why isn't her voice crying? Um, and your voice is a fucking downer. I don't know. Fuck that prick. Paul, you're running Fez. Hey, guys. Hey, Fez. I'm thinking maybe you're confused and that maybe that's not your inner voice. That's the listeners' voices. It could possibly all run together. It, it seems like every inner voice thought that you've had is the same thing that I've been thinking. Debate him, Fez. So you have your own inner voice going. Probably says the same thing to you. Why don't the inner, inner voice say something back to him? Uh, uh, inner voice uh, will agree with him is the problem. Was that you saying that or inner voice? No, that was inner voice. So he said that's the problem? And inner voice talks in the third person? Yeah. And I keep thinking every time Fez says something, that's the problem. So my inner voice, my voice is actually Fez's inner voice. Um, Murray, you're in my Fez. 
Hey, guys. Uh, the other day before the uh, Paul McCartney concert, Opie and Anthony were talking with one of the big shot suits outside of the uh, studio. And as they were talking, the, the guy looks over at Opie and says, hey, pull your pants up to Opie. Anthony fell out laughing, and Opie really didn't have a comeback. And I was just wondering what, what, what Ronnie B's uh, inner voice would say if, if somebody said that to him in, in mid-conversation. and just kind of 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, here's Gary, you're on the Run of Fez show. Uh, it sounds like inner voice is kicking the shit out of out of voice, by the way, Fezzy. But, Fezzy, does your inner voice also jump from team to team? Is it a big, big bandwagon jumping the inner voice just like your outer voice? No, it's just team anti-Fez. Okay. So it, does it like the Bucks this year or no? Uh, it doesn't. The inner voice doesn't uh, ha think of anything else but um, the panic. Why is that? That's uh, That's the only time it shows up. So if everything's going great, you don't hear the inner voice. No, not usually. But, I mean, it's it's around quite a bit. Mm. Um, Bill, you're on Fez. Hey, what's going on, buddies? Uh, Fez, is it possible that your inner voice is Dennis Quaid from Inner Space? That would actually be a more comforting inner voice. At least I'd be hearing Dennis Quaid instead of this voice. Robert, you're on the Run of Fez show. Fezzy, in the matter of 50 minutes, you went from having a great day to to crying, man. What, what the hell? Um, there's people in your life that have pissed you off, and you just totally write them off and don't talk to them anymore. Why, why, why don't you try that with your inner voice? It's really interesting. I'm working on getting rid of it. Then Hicks and I will feel like we've lost a friend. Yeah, I might miss inner voice. Sure, he was down a lot of times, but yeah, it's good to hang out with. Dennis, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. Is there any chance we'll get a chance to uh, enjoy a um, inner voice tutorial anytime soon? Oh. Mm. Any chance for that inner voice? Well, I mean, it would just be a, fa uh, a Fez bashing inner voice tutorial. Who's saying that, inner voice or Fez? That's Fez saying that. It's so difficult. Maybe if you gave inner voice a different voice from you. Oh, okay. Uh, Mark, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Fez, I was just wondering if inner voice is going to be buying Ronnie a shitty gift this Christmas. Um, no, I'll be buying Ron a, a Christmas gift this is year. That, is that in her voice? No, that's my voice. Shit. Because it seems like inner voice is uh, a little more critical. It might really think about it a little bit. Um, inner voice will only come in if the, ba if the gift is bad again this year. Mike, you're on the Run Fez show. Hey, I'm wondering if Fez's so, uh, uh, inner voice can do a self-contained bit. Because it sounds like it little, has a little sand in its vagina. And yet again, the sand in the vagina line. Very original. Is that inner voice? No, that's Fez. Where's inner voice? We haven't talked to him in a while. Inner voice is saying that Fez is just an idiot. Fez is a moron. And uh, Fez isn't thinking of anything witty to say. And when he uh, isn't thinking of something, he's just sitting here panicking. Inner voice sounds like a, like a longshoreman or something. Again, Fez is just uh, panicking, just wonder. Uh, Inner voice? What's your favorite color? Um, whatever color Fez hates. What movies are your favorite, Inner voice? Um, all the things that Fez never sees. Do you like Riddler, Inner voice? She can't stand the Riddler. Riddler's a stupid, immature thing that Fez uh, tends to cling on to. Inner voice, what's your favorite album? I uh, wouldn't know. Fez has never listened to music, so I don't get a chance to even hear it. Fucking retard. Inner voice, why do you think that the that he clings onto the Riddler? Because uh, he's uh, he prob at this point he's um, in such a loser place in his life. Didn't he always like? Didn't he always like the Riddler? Yeah, so that's what he's clinging to, mm. but not uh, too stupid to move on from it into other things. Too scared, too panicked all the time. Inner voice, why Why is you a Jeff fan? Because he was dumb enough to watch a TV show a couple of times and jump on a bandwagon. 
Does that make you happy in her voice? Um, oh, well, it gives me just more things to berate him about. So, yeah, I'll say that makes me happy. It makes vo- me thrilled because it's one more fuck up. In her voice, what were you thinking about when that, during the party Sunday night? Uh, look at Stupid sitting there uh, on the yeah. side of his own party starting to panic. You felt like you were on the side instead of in the middle in her voice? Uh, I think Fez was. I think Fez kind of like uh, uh, was sitting there and just not moving around, not um, being, a, being a decent host. What, what would you have liked to have seen him do in her voice? I would have liked to have seen him at least enjoy himself and, uh, for the entire night. That's nice that you're thinking about Fez that way in her voice. Where, uh, and just get off his ass and do something instead of sitting there and panicking. In her voice, why are you staring at Roosevelt Island? Too stupid to leave. Uh, too scared. Uh, Fez is too scared to leave. So he he uh, makes sure that everything stays the fucking same because it's he's too dumb to leave. What comfort do you get from Roosevelt Island, or does Fez get? I think Fez just knows where he's going. Mm. Where it's it's almost like uh, the walk down the island is something that Fez knows he can pull off. Mm-hmm. That it's like it's it's at least one thing that he uh, won't have to panic about mm. is going back to the same stupid place you, uh, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Why does he uh, not want to move to Chelsea? Uh, I think he wants to, but he's just he doesn't he just doesn't get things done. He's mm. uh, he's he's he uh, gets wrapped up in his own stupid head. He lets me push him around, and as long as he stays on Roosevelt Island, I get to stick around. Yeah, but you see that you're no help? Um, uh, no help to him, but I'm a help to me. Every time he panics, it just lights me up. Uh, Lacanio, you're on Running Fez Show. Hey, I want to know if uh, Fez's inner voice has a, has a name. What's it called? Just inner voice. Just not Todd or any name? Uh, listen, I just told you, it's inner voice. Okay, well, can start going through a baby the book. Uh, dinner voice is fun. Damn, inner voice. George, Florida, you're running Fez. Hey, Ronnie, I got a question for inner voice. Why is Fez piss shy? Inner voice. Uh, Fez, for some reason, doesn't want people to think that he pisses. <laughs> uh, for some reason, Fez thinks that uh, Fez must have it deep down in here somewhere that pissing is a, a bad thing to do. And doesn't want anyone to hear the noise of the piss hitting the water. Uh, Jason, you're on run of Fez. What the fuck is going on? Inner voice, would you like to answer? What the fuck's going on is I'm having a heyday with Fez today. He's all locked up, he's all panicked, and guess what? That's perfect for me because I get to scream inside his head. Just scream until his ears are ringing. But I hear a lot of confidence in inner voice. Oh, yeah. Like, you like being on the air. Um, and what happens is Fez gets in the way. Right. So maybe we could start and do a show with you in her voice. Uh, Dal, you're on running Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, Bernie, I was curious. Do we get prizes if inner voice cries or? Inner voice isn't going to cry. The way you get prizes is search, search, hurry up and search, dope. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is where Fez should be telling everyone about the great prize. Here's the situation, the signed book by The Situation. That'll be coming up a little bit later on the Run and Fez show. Fez is too stupid to put that out there. Oh, leave him alone. I want to know. Oh, leave him alone in her voice. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. Paul, you're on the Run and Fez show. Hey, what's up, fellas? Uh, hey, Mr. Uh, Inner Voice, I, I want to know, do you happen to know what Fezzy's secret is? I know every one of Fez's fucking secrets, and I can I can beat him up at any day about it. I, I know about the times he's shit himself, I know all those things. So, And all the stupid mistakes he makes every day. So, Fez has a lot of secrets, not just one. Um, just embarrassing moments. Oh, no. Does he shit himself a lot? He shits himself enough that it's a concern. Oh, God. Because he can't get his stupid diabetes under control, so he's got to take the medicine. I had no idea of this in her voice. But uh, we do accept, let Fez know that we do accept that about him. I'm not letting him know that. Does it happen at work? 
It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's happened at work before. Oh, no. This is not good. It happened just last week. What? So in that's voice? that fucking odor. We were wondering about it with the unmasked. Has he shit himself and unmasked? Um, he may have shit himself before and unmasked and then got into the studio. See? Thank you. Um. I know it all. Everything about him, huh? Mm-hmm. You must really like Fess. I hate him. Why? Despise him. Why? Weak, stupid, worthless. Don't cry in her voice. We're here with you. We won't let Fez hurt you. Uh, Dave, you're on running Fez. Yes, what happens if you dial 1-866-RON-ZERO-INTER-VOICE? Why don't you dial it and find out, genius? Good one. Good one, Eve. Good one, Ivy. Um, so it seems like you're doing a good job of taking over for Fez. Maybe he can get a rest while you're on the air. I'm sure he'll find a way to fuck it up. Inner voice, please stop talking about my friend. Yeah, Jesus, lay off, IV. <laughs> that IV thing's catching on, huh? Um, here's uh, Tony, you're on a Fez. Hey, Fez, I want to talk to your inner voice. I want to know if he knows what you jack off to, men or women. Ouch. Uh, all I know is that he doesn't talk uh, to jack off to Tony in Memphis. Good one. Good one, IV. In fact, that's a pretty big turnoff for just about anyone, I would imagine. Good. Um, Ed, you're on Run Fez. Yeah, I want to know if the inner voice has an inner voice. Wow, that's interesting. Inner voice, does sometimes your inner voice bother you about not bothering um, Fez enough? Every, time, every now and then, Fez will try to conjure up another inner voice to mm -hmm. tell me to shut up. Yeah, it doesn't work. doesn't work. doesn't last too long. Now, did you have, um, did your, did your shrink try to, or did Fez's shrink try to teach him that inner voice? Uh, what the shrink tries to do, uh, is just get me to, uh, ease up, to not be there all the time. Mm hmm. So. Um, here's Todd, Florida, you're on Fez. Hey, the inner voice. Yes. Do you want <laughs> Fez to get better? Do you want Fez to get better? Because I don't think you do. You go out there and, and, and you get on the meds for two weeks, the most critical time, and then you pull Fez back off of them. Don't you know what you're missing, both of you? What are you talking you about the meds for two weeks? He's saying that uh, go, Fez didn't stay on the meds long enough? Right. Fez was when on the meds for on Fez was on uh, de uh, antidepressants for years. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's not what you say on the radio. Well, at least that's your outer voice. you got to stay on for more than two weeks, because once you get off after two weeks, you're going to go down again even harder. Listen, I'm no friend Sorry, of Fez, right? but you're being an idiot. Fez has never just stayed on a pill for two weeks. Uh, and then I depress it. You're absolutely wrong, you fucking asshole. you feel a lot better. Okay, goodbye. Okay, goodbye. All right. Inner voice, please. I don't mind you running down Fez, but the listeners, that's different. Uh, Jeff, you're running Fez. Hey, Ronnie, does this mean you got to give half your money to enter voice now? Does this mean I'm somehow getting a quarter of a paycheck? I don't know how this works. <laughs> You're um, getting screwed, partner. Although I am really kind of liking enter voice. Um, somebody wrote in, Fezzi is slowly becoming Bob Dole. There is a Bob Dole thing to enter voice. Um, here is uh, Bob. Bob, you're on Fez. Hey, buddies. Uh, inner voice. I was wondering if you hang out with Midnight Rider on the weekend. Doesn't happen. I just stick in Fez's head, letting him know what he's doing wrong. I, gotta run to keep from I don't know whether it was the hoodie footy that has brought IV to the forefront, but I wouldn't mind having inner voice uh, tutorial. I love it. IV's life of the party right now. Hey, inner voice, if Fez uh, figures out his meds, will he stop shitting himself? Uh, I think what has to happen is Fez has to get off those meds altogether, where he uh, doesn't need to uh, take them, mm -hmm. and then uh, maybe then the shitting will stop. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things that once it's put in motion, it doesn't matter whether he's taking the pills or not. 
What did uh, Fez do with his leftover food from the party? All that leftover junk food. Uh, Fez took some down to the doorman mm-hmm. and then kept some as well. Mm-hmm. Kept a lot of the chips, brought the tasty cakes back in because he couldn't trust himself. Oh, nice. Yeah, we housed those. Thanks, IV. What do you mean you housed them? Ate them shits up. <laughs> we'll take the chips, too. Uh, by way, are you talking about yourself, Queen Elizabeth? Yeah, me. Um, Mike, you're on my face. Marty. Yeah. We're talking to a man's inner voice. Yeah. It's a madhouse. A madhouse. Dr. Josh in Iowa, you're on manifest. Hi, buddies. Hey, inner voice, what brought you about? What created you? Uh, as far as I remember, it was just something that used to just uh, pop up every once in a while. Not every day, not even every week, but just... Who's this talking? Inner voice. So you you call yourself it? Uh, well, uh, so you don't see yourself as a real person? No, no, I'm just uh, the inner voice that just screams inside Fez's head. So you don't exist... Except for this one thing. Do you want to keep living? No, it's a, it's not even a personality. It's just a voice. Do you want to keep living? Um, uh, No, because I keep telling uh, Fez to do the stuff to get better so I can go. That's what's pissing me off. I'd like to get the fuck out of here. And where do you go? I would just go away. I wouldn't have to sit here and do and be inside his head 24 hours a day. So you don't worry about not existing? No. No, I would re- I would prefer not to exist, but uh, this guy's too stupid to get his head together and get rid of me. He's so, gone to shrink after shrink. He's tried pill after pill. He's not getting it together. When's the first time you started to exist? How old was Fez? First time inner voice came in. Uh, probably about like uh, maybe about eight years old. Mm. So you don't even remember. No, no, but it just used to be every now and then, idiot. Now, was that before? So you were an inner voice without pubes. Oh, yeah. You were just baby inner voice. Oh. Hold on. I got a great idea for a new one panel comic strip. Baby inner voice. Um, Here's Larry. You're on running Fez. Hey, inner voice. I want to know when you're done talking, is Fez going to know what you've been saying about him? Uh, Fez hears it. It's all inside his voice. It's all inside his head. Okay. All right. Well, where's Fez now? Why we're talking to you, inner voice? Fez is just sitting there panicking. Tim and Tulsa, you're on Fez. Uh, yeah. I, do you fall down escalators too? Uh, I may have pushed him. So you're just one part of Fez's personality, right? I don't even know if it's a part of the personality. I think it's just that uh, you are Fez. Then it's that critical inner voice. Mm-hmm. It's just a crit- It's more of an observer. I don't think I'm part of Fez's life, other than uh, you know residing inside his head. I think it's just a critical observer. So you've told the shrink about this, right? Oh yeah. And did they ever just talk to inner voice? Um, uh, sometimes just through like some. Uh, visualization work uh-huh. but inner voice shows right back up uh scott you're on fez all right inner voice were you the one that farted and woke fez up from the nap uh that i, I don't fart i'm just a voice i'm just an inner voice fez farts hmm? fez farts and wakes himself up on people's couches and sometimes sharts and sometimes sharts 866 run zero fez here's tom lana you're on fez Hey, buddies, quick question, IV. Um, does IV know what cum tastes like? Uh, uh, IV just wants to know uh, why you're so interested in it. Are you planning huh. a holiday recipe? Good with inner voice. Having friends over? No, I, I do. I hear the confidence in inner voice. So here's the thing, Hicks. If we could keep the confidence that inner voice has, yeah. but get away from his anti-Fez thing. If inner voice wasn't attacking Fez, maybe he could be protecting Fez. Fez doesn't deserve protection. Stop it, inner voice. Come on, IV. We're all here together. Fez should have to protect himself. Right, using you. I'm just here to critique. I have my own inner voice. I call it Chinese throwing stars. And when I don't like what people are saying to me, 
into their calf with a Chinese throwing star. Um, here's uh, Chris, you're on Fez. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, in her voice, has uh, Fez's psychologist talked about something called a disassociative identity disorder, which is kind of sounding like what... Uh, what inner voice actually is going on with Fezzi? Haven't heard that one come up in that office. That's what it sounds like. I uh, sounds like it's just one part of uh, Fezzi that uh, kind of splintered, uh, splintered off. Uh, what a bad experience in a childhood? What happens in that office is the shrink tries to get Fez to calm down using focalization and visualization. Mm -hmm. And if the the plan is if Fez can use those tools to calm himself down, a calmer Fez. Won't, will uh, silence the inner voice a lot. Other, 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 other inner voices other than just the the one that this, or is there other inner voices floating around that are telling Fezzi to do other things? Nope, just this one. Are you sure? Well, there was the time that Fez tried to uh, create an inner voice to chill me out, and it didn't work. That one got chased off. How did that one sound? That one sounded a lot like Fez. What was it saying to you? Um, Leaf has alone. Just calm down. This isn't as bad as you think. Now, did Fez do that on his own, or did the psychiatrist help him? Uh, the psychiatrist was helping with that, and then he tried to do it on his own. It, it started in the shrink's office, and then Fez tried to do it on his own. Um, here is uh, Kyle. Kyle, you're on Fez. Yeah, hey, I was wondering how uh, you and Hicks feel safe sitting in there with an obvious schizo. I feel very safe with Fez. I love IV. I think Ivy could be some help to Fez if Ivy would just join the team. Yeah, really. Fez is too stupid to pull that one off. Could you do it as a favor to me, Inner Voice? I would love to do that as a favor to you. Thank you, Inner Voice. I like you. You put, uh, you, uh, you put up with Fez. I don't know how you do it. Oh, Inner Voice. You're the only person who's ever understood me. Uh, Dr. Otis, you're on Fez. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Yeah. I'm a trained clinical psychologist, and okay, well, I got inner, radio shows. Inner, inner voices are, are very scary. Um, Fess should be admitted immediately. Uh, Charles Manson heard inner voices. Mm -hmm. But so did Hillary Clinton. Yeah, but look at her. Oh, good point. All right, thanks. All right. He's not a real doctor, inner voice. No, I could tell. The real ones uh, rarely announce their uh, title. Hmm. You're so wise in her voice. Oh, yeah. The IV's all over it. I think sometimes you're the best friend I ever had. Oh, come on. A lot better than Hicks, that's for sure. <gasps> really? IV just showed up. Still, he knows me in a way that you don't. He appreciates me. I appreciate you, Ron. My two best friends are Inner Voice and Mark Zito. Jesus, where am I on this list? Am I even ranking top three? Um, all right, do you know that one security guard that's always sitting down there checking on badges? Yeah. You're a little bit below his shoelaces. Oh, Jesus. What? His shoelaces. Um, let's go here to Jeff. Jeff, you're on my face. This Jeff? Yeah, I guess it is. I don't know who, maybe it's <laughs> Jeff's inner voice. Uh, maybe it is. I was wondering why uh, uh, Fed's inner voice isn't uh, cool and funny. Like uh, Polly or uh, Chip, instead he has to be an asshole. Uh, right now, Inner Voice is just trying to uh, be as funny as uh, Jeff from Texas. Good one. And, oh, wait a minute, achieved. Goal achieved. Now, you're confident on the air, Inner Voice. Well, it's just, I'm tr what I'm trying to do is just say the asshole things I would normally say to Fez to other people. That's good. Might not be a bad way to be. Where's Fez while you're here doing the show? Fez is basically uh, shivering in a corner. Is he lying dormant or is he screaming, let me out? No, no, he's uh, in a cocoon of fear. Could you tell him that Ron says hi? And I want to talk to him later about, are we going to do that dinner before he goes to uh, Florida this year? Because we haven't worked that out. I'll let him know. Thanks. I'll scream it at him. And ask him what he wants for dinner that night. Oh, I can ask answer that myself. That? Uh, turkey. A whole turkey? Jesus. Just a lot to cook in her voice. <laughs> it's not it's not like it's a small thing that you can just whip up 
Every year it's a whole turkey. Very impractical, IV. Then I know. He gets another turkey when he gets to Florida. Because there might be a couple turkey clubs in it for me after inner voice leaves. Ooh. I can speak for Fez. He really loves turkey. <laughs> <laughs> inner voice, you he are. He cannot a... get enough of it. <laughs> inner voice, you are a dick. Um, let's go over here to um, Bob. Bob, you're on Fez. Yeah, I was going to ask Ivy if he thinks Fez maybe should have went to bat for Dave a little more. And if Dave would still be around, he'd be able to help Fez out. He wouldn't have to talk so much. Inner voice is just that, you know, Dave uh, uh, Dave didn't uh, get fired. Mm. Uh, Jared, Aaron Ronnie Fez. Yeah, uh, two questions real quick. Ronnie, is Fezzi, are Fezzi's eyes open during all this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. And uh, inner voice, uh, honestly, what do you think of uh, Ronnie B and uh, Pepper? I think Ronnie B's great. I think Pepper's great. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, hey, Ivy. They're, they're, they're any... ten times better than Fez. You don't have any problems with the way Ronnie, uh, Ronnie takes all these callers? I, what, what's that? You don't have any problem with the way that Ronnie takes all these idiot callers that, that berate Fezzi and, uh, and put him in a corner? And, and, and How would you get through if he didn't? Oh! Just count your blessings, Jocko. I like Jocko now for when we don't like people. We'll just call them Jockos. Um, here's uh, Bill. Bill in Boston, you're in Fez. Fuck you, Inner Voice. We love Fez, and I'm not going to take your shit anymore. Uh, you don't take my shit. Fez does. <laughs> and he takes right. it with a spoonful of sugar, and he loves it. Because I give it to him every day. Oh. Um, I like the Inner Voice. Yeah, Ivy, you're the man. You coming to the uh, I, office Christmas party today? I just, uh, we having an office Christmas party? From 5 to 7 p.m. in the reception area. How come I was never told about this? I just found about it this morning. What do we have? Pizza and uh, sushi like last year? Yeah. Chicken skewers. <laughs> nice finger foods. You're only going to be disappointed. Oh, yeah, but there should be garbage cans full of beer like the classy place that says. Oh, is there? Yeah, that's what it was last year. Who's behind it? I'm not sure. I guess HR possibly, or promotions, putting it Puffin together. stuff? Yeah, I don't think you have to get rid of inner voice. I think that you just have to assimilate him. I think that he could get a better job as a protector. The way I say it, Fez is on his own. But I'll miss you, inner voice, if he gets better. Don't go away. I'll miss you. I'll see you all at the Christmas party tonight. <laughs> he won't be seeing me. Enjoying some cold chicken skewers. <laughs> Can't wait, IV. And the peanut sauce they put out there. Jiff in a bowl. Wow, you have been around a long time. Um, here's uh, Renee, you're on Renee Fez. Hey, just a few questions for IV. First of all, IV, uh, did you get mad at Fez because he didn't go see Ronnie in the hospital? I sure did. Let him have it. So you should have, you would have gone to see Ronnie in the hospital, right? Uh, see, Fez doesn't think of these things until um, it's too late. Let me ask and then I just let him have it. Inner voice, I'm going to say this once and for all. Fez doesn't have to visit me in the hospital. It ain't that big a deal. I ain't one of those guys. I don't need a Christ I don't need a fucking Christmas card. I don't need a birthday card. I'll need somebody to fucking visit me in the hospital. So you were wrong on that one, IV. But he doesn't mind showing up and eating your turkey. I don't have any problem with that. That's something that we do. That's different. Delicious IV turkey. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I could make him a turkey when my goddamn uh, when my stomach was hurting. Uh, and here's the other thing in her voice. Let's help Fez with that shitting himself thing instead of running him down. Yeah. Because I didn't disturbing. know that was happening. I mean, obviously, we smelled it on mass. We didn't know what, exactly what it was. And there's times in the office I got a hint of poop, but I thought maybe, you know, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't know it was shit coming out. Uh, Kevin, you're on the Fez. Good morning, boys. Who is, uh, I just got my radio on. I'm catching up late today. Who is this third person that's in the studio? I hadn't heard a voice yet. I hadn't heard a name. It's in her voice. Try to catch up. Where's Fez? It, you got to pay attention. Catch the replay on 202. Well, look who it is. It's the ECW zombie. How you doing, zombie? Hey, Mr. B. How you doing? Good. Hey, um, in her voice, you're working great today. The top baby face. Fez, you would have, uh... 
says he says he's definitely doing the job big time to you. And um, I got to say, thanks a lot, man, because you're really contributing today. I can make Fez count the lights anytime I want to. Doing a great job today, Fezzy. Thanks, Zombie. Oh. Don't break it, Fabe. Um. All right, so we got a new friend today. Uh, Fez is in her voice. I got to ask him if he would stand down a little bit because, well, what time are we doing search, search? One thirty. All right, when we, uh, so that's when we get back. You show Liam how many cigarettes you got today? Seven cartons, Liam. Yeah, he <laughs> saw that giant pile. Thank you so much to goddamn Phil and Madison. He sent me over 13 cartons of cigarettes so far. He, this is his third shipment of cigarettes. Phil Madison, you're a wonderful human being. Oh, uh, you should write a song about him. I also saw a big bottle of scotch up there. Yeah. Yeah, there's a Somebody's giant bottle of scotch. Somebody's been breaking into it, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, giant bottle of scotch. Someone's, you know, been tipping in there. I've been thinking about drinking again for Christmas. No. Why? Don't. You guys drinking is great. It's kind of fun. There's but a party in the lobby. You shouldn't be drinking paying that scotch. <laughs> Hold on, I just have to take this. Hello? Hello? I assume this is a pants call then. Yeah, it's from a friend of mine, but uh, there's no answer. Uh oh. I can just hear what they're doing in the neighborhood. Oh, what are they up to? It sounds like they're in a lobby of some place. Sounds very festive. Should I put them in the system? Uh, no, I don't think it's our lobby. Uh, no big guests rolling through here next week, is there, Liam? We're shutting down for Christmas. Yeah, it's pretty quiet around here, Ronnie. We're getting stuff ready for January. No, the big excitement seems to be the the employee party in the lobby tonight. It's going to be big tonight. It's going everybody gets drunk up in here and then goes up to goes up to their office and writes inappropriate emails. Oh, there's nothing like it. Paul McCartney coming again this year? He's not coming this year. And Fez, you wanted to know if there's going to be chicken skewers? Yeah, chicken skewers with the peanut sauce. You like that? Yeah, it's it's nice. It's uh, the sushi gets a little warm, the chicken gets a little cold. It's yeah. perfect. Is this Fez or Inner Voice? This was Fez. Inner Voice seems to have brought out the best in you. Yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Did you uh, did you like my uh, throwing a shoe at you while you were doing the read? Scared the hell out of me. Yeah, but I it was like the big joke, and it tied it in and made Jay laugh, and then he goes like this: "Ah, oh, you knuckleheads!" He does that whole. <laughs> Uh, old school radio. <laughs> you fellas look like you slept on the floor, but in the meantime, I've got Garrett with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about Letterman, okay? That you won't hear. I was with Robin Williams and Morgan Mindy in '79. Uh, actually, I do. Have, I met Jay Thomas years ago when I worked at a hotel, and he left and ran up this enormous long distance bill when there used to be such a thing no way. that he didn't pay for. Yeah. He was doing a theater, doing a theater show, uh -huh. and I guess he thought they would pay for every everything. But this was on the East Coast, and every night he was calling whoever lived in L.A., stayed on the phone with her all night. Wow. And, you know, we're like, uh, Mr. Thomas checked out, and I'm like, yeah, so what? Well, he's got a $2,700 long-distance right. bill, yeah. it's a lot of money. Yeah, what are you going to do? I guess for phone calls? Uh, Whatever. Well, you know, I don't know. You ever made a, a long-distance phone call in a fucking hotel phone? No, I use my cell phone. Yeah. It's like $9 a minute. It's Is fucking... It? Yeah, it's crazy prices. Don't it's like the phones the they bar. used to have on the plane. $75 a minute. Wow. Yeah, it is. It's kind of. It's not as bad as what they don't have those on the on the plane anymore. Right? I don't see them anymore. Well, no. you're almost at the point where you don't even need a phone in a fucking hotel room. Like, doesn't everybody have a phone? Yeah, of course. Who has a home phone? So Blake Me? Edwards gone. You have a home phone, Fez. Ditch it. Not only that, but here's the weird thing about Fez: when he gets home, he will not answer his cell phone. What? He moves oh. over. I texted his house phone so many times I can't count. <laughs> Liam's still the champion. How many days now, Liam? Uh, that was number nine, I believe. Yeah. And wasn't it great that I did what St uh, Stinky said and introduced him as Garrett? Yeah, that was very nice of you not to that use the nice. term Stinky. Yeah. Does he ever even talk to Owen anymore? I don't see it happening. I've never seen them like just chatting it up in the halls. No. But there was never any fallout, right? No. Nope. No. Because he was everybody's favorite producer. And then he just went away and then came back as Garrett. Yeah. 
I don't know what he saw. But he's my <laughs> he's my current office mate right now. Yeah. We, we sit together, and he still smells the same. He still stinks. Yes, he does. Huh. I guess we could just, if someone smells, we can just say they garroted it. <laughs> Plus, we found out today, Fez sometimes shits his pants, which isn't helpful. He garroted his pants. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're right. I don't know why I did <laughs> I don't know why I said it the wrong way. So I was actually told this is Stinks coming in. Um, Stinky's coming in. He's going to play for Jay because Jay doesn't drive. Uh, <laughs> but he wants you to call him Garrett. <laughs> and I'm only saying that because Jay sold out our guys. Didn't seem like be such like, oh, well, let me keep it all backstage. I didn't know that his son was so uh, doing so well. I didn't know that either. How's your son, Fez? I don't have a son. I'm alone in this world. What about Ivy? That is your son. Your inner voice is your son. <laughs> and he talks back. <laughs> right now I treat Earl like he's my son. Are you disappointed or happy? Well, I'm disappointed that he's black. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I'm fine. With you haven't it. gotten past that yet. Yeah. And mainly that's my fault for adopting a black kid. <laughs> You should have known. Mm, I guess so. Or maybe it's their fault. They should put it on the application. Listen how strong you are today after having your inner voice blow off. This is my old friend Fez. This is great. Hello. Maybe you just need to let inner voice run with it a little while. Um, Fez, after IV today, it seems like it's a big comeback show for you. It feels like it. All because of uh, IV? I think it's more IV than the hoodie footy, but they might the the pajamas that I've been wearing all day. That helps a lot too. But it may be a combination of the two. Are you going with hoodie footy tomorrow? Oh yeah, I'll bring it. I'm going to sleep in it tonight. And will there be an IV? Uh, you guys look like you slept in those clothes on the floor here. Uh, are you also going to? Uh, have IV on the show tomorrow. IV will probably be back, too. I think I'll probably need to have IV, IV back. Now, this makes me think that he's... that it's not such a bad thing for him, Hicks, if he's that happy about having him back. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm I'm, seeing, I'm hearing the same exact thing. That Well, the confidence that and the aggressiveness of IV really seems to help regular Fez. It does. Right? Yeah. Somehow. Point out why. Now, you're wearing your pajama gram again today. Yeah, I figured I'd put on the security blanket one more time. All right. Uh, 866 Ron Zero Fez. Uh, 866 Ron Zero Fez. Uh, all right, we'll get the H.E. Buns uh, started today. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, let's nominate uh, Pepper Hicks for XM Employee of the Day for covering your ass when you come in late. I don't even understand what you're what? talking about there. I was here early. plenty of time. Come on, man. Plenty like, of time. Like. Let's have listening parties sometimes when Ron gets in here. Early. Yes, a the lot fuck? of times I'm going to go like this, Pepper. And I was even thinking about doing a music block. Oh, I was really. I was ready for that. to go. John uh, Barry Corn must die. I didn't care, but I just want to say something to the <laughs> shit fucks down the hall. Don't think because you hear a lovely traffic song that I'm running late. I'm here early. I got here today before O and A. You're already on that bread, huh? How is it? It's very good. Thank I had to tell you the truth. I didn't have breakfast today. It is a and what what flavor is that? It tastes like banana or something. Yeah, it's like some kind of banana thing. But that is. Um, from a friend of mine, and it's, I have a new girlfriend, and I don't quite trust her yet, uh, okay. Brett. And he goes, I'm going to throw this out, and I'm like, let me take it in, because <laughs> um, we used to have a thing where Fez Watley was Mr. Popularity. He used to come in and feed Pep, blah, blah, blah. He got out of that. I know. It hurts. I, I really got, I never had a consistent breakfast ever in my life, and when mm -hmm. Fez brought that into me, it was like a light shining on me. Cause I didn't know I, that. I have some food in the morning. It makes you feel good the rest of the day. Uh, I really I had no idea about all that. Dan, Dan, you're on the Run of Fest show. Yo, Ronnie, what did Inner Voice think of today's opener? I don't want to, uh, seriously, I don't want to bring Inner Voice into this unless we have to. Uh, I actually saw this tweet yesterday from a lovely young Brazilian girl, Brazilian Julie, who stated that she... She wanted to ask to come in and visit the Ron and Fez show, but she's so afraid of inner voice that she's decided not to. Well, I was thinking about calling out sick today, too. 
<laughs> Yesterday was really fucking weird. Well, it scared you? Um, at the at, when it first started happening, I was seriously weirded out. I was a little fucking freaked out. You cannot seriously. It's just something crazy happens every day. When the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. True. Uh, the doctor said it best. Well, I'm here. I'm let's fucking roll with it. Here's what you gotta understand. Okay. Your your life now built around this show. You're in a fucking spooky funhouse, <laughs> right? So you can't turn around. You I can't know. go backwards, and at the same time, you can't stay there. Because the guy who doesn't make the moves and keep moving, he ends up staying in the freak house. He can't get out. Yeah. So just go like, well, look at that poor freak. He got stuck here, and then you just keep moving. Moving back and forth. All right, love it. See, um, the inner voice will only attack me. So and I don't think anyone needs to worry about the inner voice. But when you say things like that, like there's rules to it, uh -huh. it becomes that spooky, weird thing again. You know what I mean? Like, oh, here's how inner voice works. Um, you know, most people would go like this. I've got to get rid of inner voice. Yeah. I've got to take a pill. I've got to get a shrink. There's another I've, person inside my head. Right. <laughs> this isn't right. Um, because really it's fucking Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah deep. Deep oh. and weird. But you can't feel fear the weirdness. You can't. I mean, at the very least, one day we'll all be cut to ribbons. So ah, what? Fuck it, right? Yeah, fuck it. That's how we went out. Our own friend chopped us up into little pieces. Murdered us. And God knows what they did to us after we were dead. Fed us to a fucking feral cat. Who oh, cares? All right. That fucking, seriously, that shirt you're wearing is so fucking cool today. Thank you. It's uh, a Donnie Dumphy shirt. Uh -huh. And I and love doing wheelies. I love doing wheelies. Yeah. Donnie Dumphy. Uh, Dave, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, I love doing wheelies too, Hicks. Uh, Ronnie B., I was going to say, uh, yesterday when Fez was talking to his inner voice or whatever, it was yeah. kind of like a Norman Bates kind of thing. I could see Fez uh, maybe wearing his mom's dress in his apartment and well, talking to himself. Yeah, there is some of that, but at the same time, and I don't want to say work, but when we all paid attention, I saw mm -hmm. a glow come off of Fez oh. because he loves to think, I've weirded everyone out. I've, uh, you know, I've leveled the playing field. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, and then the rest of me. the show, he was like old Fez. Yeah. And by that, I don't mean old Fez from like the past several months or even past several years. He was like Fez used to be. And all that was because he kicked us in the balls with inner voice. <laughs> well, it worked on me. I told you I was freaked out. I was totally weirded out. He got me. You got it, me, Fez? It ain't my first fucking trip to the rodeo. So I fucking know a corny when I see one. And I do think that he probably does some kind of inner voice stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think he went, he ran with it. Yeah, right now it's just screaming again inside. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. You're trying. What You're just going like this. Is How can I get them all? And it's telling me to just think of something to say to that. Please, please think of something to say. Think of something now. He wants to say he wants to. Oh, no. He wants to bring in her voice back. Um, Bust out that crazy bastard. <laughs> Larry, you're on run of Fez. Larry. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I got a Michi Bond. <laughs> Yes, the Philadelphia Post Dispatch is named Cliff Lee the greatest left handed pitcher in Philadelphia history. Thank you. Don't even fucking start on me today, Larry. I got no I got no hate for Cliff Lee, but if I wake up this morning and people are making disparaging remarks about Steve Carlton, I'm gonna go fucking batshit crazy. All right. I'll and you're gonna fucking see it. my inner voice. Oh, and my Jesus. inner voice is a Chinese throwing star. Jesus. Silent. But deadly. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RUN-ZERO-FEZ. Um, here's uh, Tony, you're on Fez. Yeah, the Ron and Fez show. It's like hanging out in a spooky fun house. I'd buy that t-shirt. Yeah, it is but nice. Yeah. <laughs> we used to be, I used to describe it as a cruel circus, but uh, we're way too uh, batshit for that now. <laughs> But, Ron, when you guys were at the party, did you check Fez, Fez's freezer for any body parts? 
Um, I don't think Fez is a dangerous person, and not even to himself. Really? Well, other than, you know, he eats poorly and he has diabetes. Underdosing. Uh, and then inner voice. See, here's what made me think, like, um, Fez was just wanted to body slam us when inner voice told us that Fez shits his pants. Yeah. Even though consistently, I've moved him in the unmasked because we're in a small room there. And I've he used to be in the first row uh, giving me, you know, kind of t- time cues. I moved him back because of a dirty diaper smell, uh. which he assured me was not him. And then yesterday, inner voice told us that one time, because of the diabetes medicine, he shit himself and then walked into an, an unmasked with it. That made me also think he's trying to get the high ground here. He's trying to, you know, and it's not a bad idea. You know, show them that you're crazy. They won't fuck with you. Everyone knows that from any kind of jail time you've ever done before. Or die hard with a vengeance. I didn't see that, and I don't want you to ruin it for me. Sorry. Well, he goes to Harlem, and he has a sign on. Oh, that's nice. Nice sign. What did it say? I love oh, I love yeah. black people? Uh, the opposite. I hate black people? Different word. I'm, I, I don't, don't know all the words for it. black people. Yeah. I don't know them all. Uh, Jim, you're on the Run of show. Hey, Ronnie B. I, I was wondering if Fez heard Opie this morning talking about his friend that was 42 years old that had diabetes, that he's going to his wake today. No, I did not hear that. Why don't you ever listen to ONA anymore? That used to be your show. You're like, oh, these are my buddies. I can't wait. And now if anything comes up on that show, you notice this Fez doesn't know about it. The other day he said this to me. Who's the guy in there with Opie? And I go, Ant? And he's like, Ant. Oh, no. I got to remember that. He Ant. didn't know. And then he actually said to me, is he a real ant? I go, no, Fez. It's short for you thought it was a giant ant talking. I don't know whether you thought it was giant. You might have thought it was a very small ant. The microphone could have been tiny. Ant. What's that, Fez? The microphone could have been tiny. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh... <laughs> We're not talking about Morgan Freeman. Oh, sorry. We're talking about Ope's buddy, 42 years old, didn't take care of his diabetes. That is Dillinger. Yeah, that's uh, that's frightening and very, very sad. Right, but we try to tell you, are you taking care of your diabetes? Yeah, I believe I am. I mean, I'm doing my best. Oh, okay. If you're doing your best, you're in perfect shape then. Um, now, what did you want to read us? Uh, um, sorry. Morgan Freeman? Yeah, Morgan Freeman was the uh, latest victim of a Twitter hoax, uh, claiming that CNN had announced that he had died. Morgan Friedman, the latest victim of a Twitter hoax. More with Fez Watley. The unfortunate thing for Morgan Freeman is he's the perfect celebrity to pull the hoax on. If it's a Justin Bieber is dead thing, then it really just goes back to uh, Paul is dead from the Beatles. Where you're gonna, that's going to just reek of hoax. Morgan Freeman, just old enough and famous enough where you would think, all right, yeah, Morgan Freeman could have been found dead in his Bel Air home. That is true because we had the same conversation with Bill Cosby. And what is it's almost Johnny like, Depp, I think it happened. Yeah, it's so? a once every yeah, couple did, yeah. of week thing here. A, here's what I don't understand though it comes out, it happened, and I don't know how many people would know about it. However many people are following some Twitter account. But then they put it on, so now everyone talks about it after the mm-hmm. fact. Yeah, they just don't try to, they, they're glorifying their fuck up. But but the weird thing is like, it's saying, if I left a note somewhere, whoever found the note would read it. But then if, once you put it on the news, now we're talking about it. And Morgan Freeman isn't dead anyway. <laughs> it's fine. And then we end up talking about hoaxes. And like, if we started to go through it, the hoax thing is, you can do it once a week. Oh, yeah, it's constantly crazy shit's fucking being said on the internet. And, and really, do you blame some fucking 18-year-old kid for trying to go viral by Fuck writing no. something Fuck no. that people retweet? Because you're, well, you're like, hey, remember that crazy re- retweet I did? It ended up on the news. Fuck yeah, dude. I told you it was fucking racking. Let's get to the keg. Um, yeah, I don't understand. They have kegs? <laughs> yeah, these 18-year-olds who are fucking with the Twitter hoaxes, they go to keg parties afterwards. Um, Bob. West VA, you're on Fez. I've got a radio psychic, Ronnie. Radio psychic? Uh, I'd love to hear one of these. Radio psychic. Uh, Ron Bennington interviews replaces Larry King live. 
on CNN to gargantuan ratings. Uh, a, nothing I, I would ever do on TV would be anything for ratings, just for fucking pure hipness. And then B, I would love to see in her voice sitting next to me there every oh. once in a while, just uh, on the CNN. We would never be able to do TV because I can't tell you how poorly we bring guests in and out. It is spooky how crazy we are. We go, we'll, we, we'll get under control. The other day we'll uh, with the Steve Jordan, no. um, I just see Steve Jordan staring at my thing. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. And it goes on and on like that. I could fucking make up a million of them. The, uh, who did we bring in the other day that we couldn't get their um, headphones on them? Uh, it was just two days ago. I can't remember. Oh, I guess it was the uh, guy who wrote a book. Uh -huh. But we left him alone uh, over there. And as I'm starting to talk to him, he's looking at headphones as if like there were two fucking space aliens tied together by a thin cord that he was supposed to do something with. Well, I mean, come on, man. They're headphones. You can put them on. You don't have to put them on. He doesn't work in radio. Okay. That's what the thing you got to understand. Some people, by the time they walk in here, they're thinking, we're really high in this strange building. <laughs> you know, this place is weird. And then people actually think this. I don't know how to get out. And they think that because it seems like a weird deal yeah. to get back in here. And I remember when I first got here thinking, you know, I got walked in to, you know, I went to Jeremy's office, but all, oh no, I guess it was Bladder's office, yeah. but they brought us, me around and a down. different way. Yeah. yeah. And I felt like I was in some kind of a fucking maze. And the whole time I'm in the meeting, I'm thinking, I hope Bladder walks me out of here again. I, <laughs> I don't want to be wandering around here for days at a time. You got to take these people and you got to pick them up like they're little fucking babies and just okay. say, look. Daddy's got you. You're not going to feel any more pain. Oh, wow. That's very sweet. I say to a lot of these guests, I say, I'm not going to let you get sexually abused. Uh, Fezzi, what's going on over there with you? What's up with IV? Just um, uh, having a lock up again. Why? You got your pajamas on? I know. It's And I, th and I tell myself, you know, well, the what? inner voice tells me, you know, you've got your pajamas on. It's what you wanted. Supposed to be helping you, and yet you still find a way to fucking ruin it. He's trying to bring IV back. Yeah, he wants IV. So all, you, all you want to do is IV. Want, want me to let you have an IV run? Um, yeah. Let's just see how that works out. Same as yesterday? No. Um, actually, it's like a self-contained IV bit. Oh, you're not going to start and already do that, are you? You've got prepared material for the inner voice. Yeah, I thought it would, if I just kind of stuck with IV and the pajamas, it would actually help. But but what but happened... It, it, it turned out it has, and I'm screwed up. No, but here's the thing, and, I'll, and I'll, uh, I have no problem with you doing it, but the inner voice was improvisational. It was your one chance to bring non-prepared material, and like Fez, what are you actually thinking? And now you're spreading the Fezness over. All right, let me hear the self-contained inner voice bit. This is Fez's inner voice. You can just call me IV. I'm the voice that's inside Fez's head, and trust me, I uh, g I get plenty of room for my dollar. And uh, this is really the most spacious place I've ever seen. It's like my apartment is the Grand Canyon. And this is inner voice lesson. Some of the things that I've taught Fez this past week. First off, with his party, I taught Fez everything he needs to know about good party planning, like things uh, things like making sure your guests have a good time, but more importantly, make sure you bitch about your guests having a good time, like with Eastside Dave, and make sure you've got plenty of party games to play. My favorite that I played was uh, with. Fez was pin the panic on the host. Then you can let the guests try to guess if they're at a fantasy football league party or a memorial service for Fez's personality. The other game that was great was make Fez panic so much that uh, the gas really started to kick in. Then he has to leave uh, his apartment acting like the garbage can is full and needs to run down to the garbage chute just to rip one. Brilliant, Fez. Next this week, uh, this past week, I taught Fez about escalators and how to ride them. The trick is to get in such a pitch that he falls down and rides down on all fours. Hey, guess what? He looked like the dog he was bitching about on the airplane but my true trick is once he falls down even though he's safe keep him riding that escalator in his mind the rest of the day he's too stupid to get off and here was a fun one from this week stir up the panic in his pea brain nice and thick 
so much so that he thinks it's okay in the middle of an interview to try to hold hands with a guest, like he did with Steve Dubonica, the tipping guy. Hey, how about throwing IV a gratuity for that one? Think about it, crazy boy. How many people come into a radio studio to be interviewed and find one of the hosts handing their big fat paw to hold? When I convince Fez that he's, that he's that crazy, it's great. But when I can spread it to others that they're sitting with a real nut job, it's absolutely perfect. And how about how I have him sitting here in pajamas, too? That's when I know I've hit the insanity three-pointer. When I can teach Fez like any, that any sort of good luck charm will help out his panic, like a hoodie footy, a toupee, or a Hitler mustache. Hello, crazy, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. And then my favorite inner voice lesson that I taught Fez was yesterday when he let me out to talk, and it was time for Fez through me to let some personal information out about himself. Does he tell an amusing story about the time he tried to water ski? No. Does he mention his talent about his hidden talent of being able to wiggle his ears? No. He just told everyone now that he's on a medicine that he uh, he has a, that has him shitting himself from time to time. That on more than one occasion, possibly even today, his cheeks are closed tight, trying to contain the seepage like it's a Chernobyl nuclear reactor. I have taught Fez well. This is IV with inner voice lessons. All right, uh, I'll try to get to the strangeness of this whole thing. So now we're told that he has an inner voice that keeps him from being himself. But then last night, Fez prepared an anti-Fez rant, Yeah, wrote it up, to read in his new butch voice. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, uh, uh, I don't know where to go. Did inner voice write that? No. No. Oh. There's no inner voice, oh, oh. as because inner voice wouldn't be doing prepared material if he was really out to ruin Fez. Oh. Why would he prepare material with inner voice? Okay. Um. I don't know. Eight six six run zero Fez. Eight six six run zero Fez. Anthony, you're on the run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie, did that sound worse or better than when, when Fez did his heart character in the competition that he did with Dave when his heart was screaming out all the complaints? Oh, yeah, it's kind of the same. This I guess bad. every part of Fez has some kind of uh, personality. Um, <laughs> Daniel, you're on the run of Fez show. Oh, I can't believe I'm on. But anyway, uh, I'm kind of going through the same stuff uh, Fez he's going through. Yeah. Except last week, I actually met a girl, and stuff started to, to change, you know? And it really means a lot. Why do I feel like I'm watching the movie Cyrus suddenly? The, uh... <laughs> no, uh, no, no. Well, congratulations, dude. Dump Thanks. all your shit on her. It's like a fat kid who's your son. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, um. Too. Paul, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, pal. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Listen, uh, we're getting ready to have a baby in 35 minutes, and uh, I want Fez to know we're naming the little girl Fez. Oh, that's really nice. Thanks, buddy. Peace. Uh, John in Alabama, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah. Fez, I thought that was great. I think you're back on track, man. That was great comedy. I love it. And please bring back Ask Pepper. See you. Um... Bob, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, buddies, I got a perfect solution for everything. Yeah. Fezzy, just let Inner Voice do the show. You sit back and relax, collect the paycheck, let him do it. Sounds great. Fez, yesterday you told us you had an inner voice. Yes. Uh, you let it ramble. Mm hmm. Why would the inner voice then write prepared comedy? I was just. How does that make sense? I thought I was just expanding on the inner voice. I know that you're expanding on the inner voice, but does it mean that it's not even real? Uh, okay. Do you really want to sit there and give away your farting and shitting information in a way to humiliate yourself? Mm. You're a fucking person, dude. You're a fucking human being. And I had this argument with Hicks. And he goes, well, the good thing about Fez is he's not a human being. And I fucking said... I brought that up, sure. Yeah. I said, I'll bet you $100 he is because he did have a heart attack and human beings have them. I don't know. I don't know about that. I guess I'm, I guess I'd lose that hundo then. And then you... Well, you came up with a great line where you told us that a fucking squirrel had a heart attack once. So I'm going to just check it. <laughs> Moby, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hello? Yeah. 
Hey, uh, that was a great rant, Fez. Uh, I like hearing your voice uh, deeper. It sounds normal. I, I don't know. Maybe you should switch to that more often. But, you know, I have a lot of those same kind of ideas going through my head. But a lot of mine end up involving women, sex, how to get pussy, and things like that. And I really didn't hear any of that in going through your head in that thing. So I, that's really There's just some thing. kind of self-loathing and some need to expose himself. Where, let me see your sheet here, Fess. This is the sheet that you wrote up for Inner Voice. Uh, all right, it's two pages of just meanness towards Fez, but also put back into that Fezatorial yeah. format where it starts with this is Inner Voice Lessons, ends with this is Inner Voice Lessons, um, running down his entire party, uh, mean to Fez about the escalator thing um the grabbing hands with uh the guests this week which the guests didn't mind mm -mm. the guests seemed like i thought he grabbed your hand uh-huh and then i gave hex the <laughs> something's happening here <laughs> and we were all happy and thought it was fun and funny oh yeah when did this turn into a painful memory for you i uh, just said it was a goofy awkward moment but the guy was happy with it. Hell yeah. Well, what else? Do, do, do the, uh, uh, you brought up about you shitting yourself again. And saying that you have seepage. Oh. Happens. <sighs> what does your doctor say about your ass? That uh, eventually I'll get used to it. Oh, Not on. the seepage, but my body will adjust to the medicine, and seepage won't happen. Not that I'll get uh, accustomed uh, to seepage. That should never happen to Dan anyone. Danny uh, flips right into us. Is it inner voice or Bobby Slayton? There is a real Bobby <laughs> Slayton thing there. Um, let's go over to uh, Keith, your manifest show. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, inner voice sounds a lot like Batman. Oh, Batman. Uh, Gary, you're on Fez. Hey, Fez, have you checked to see if Carlos Mencia's inner voice has stolen any of your inner voice's material yet? Um, I don't think Carlos's inner voice wants this. Now, Fez, also, I'm going over your writing here. And you said that you... Uh, kept acting like the garbage was full and you need to leave the apartment to run down the garbage chute to let one rip. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I was taking out the garbage at the party. Now, what is your reasoning for outing yourself with that? That, uh, that I, uh, uh, inner voice always likes to expose me and uh, humiliate me. Why? Because I can't get my shit together. Literally. Your shit can't stay in your asshole. <laughs> um, but why would you do this to you? Why would you pre-write a bit about you? I don't understand. Uh, it's just that the inner voice was working so well for me yesterday that... So the, the inner voice is you? Well, when I, when I was able to put it out there verbally, mm -hmm. it was working for me, so I just tried to expand on that. Right, but you... Took it back into the same stuff instead of being at the improv thing, which is where you're, uh, you know, trying to get back to. Eddie, you're running Fez. Hey, Fezzy. Uh -huh. You there? Yeah. Yep. Hey, first off, let me start out by saying you're a fucking genius, man. The second, I got to ask you, did your mother nitpick you a lot when you were growing up? And I'm not trying to be ignorant. Yeah, he, he's talked about that many times. It, you always feel like a big part of your whole life is these mom issues. Yeah, that that's come up with the shrink on more than one occasion, sure. But now you're okay with it? Um, well, I don't... I, Is your inner voice your mom? Uh, I guess it could... Yeah, it probably started that way. It probably used to be her voice. Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, just changed into my voice. Well, that's not your voice that you're doing, though. You're doing some other voice. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the voice inside my head is the one screaming at me mm -hmm. and critiquing me all the time. I went ahead and made it deeper just to distinguish between my voice, you know, when it's out loud, to make, whew, to make it different from my voice, even though it's the exact same voice. Why don't you use your voice as deep 
and then give inner voice the Fez voice. Then that might be a way of turning it back around. Huh. Um, Joker, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, hey, Fezzy. I need to call and apologize. I've been dogging you for a couple of months. Everything seems to be going the wrong direction. And that bit was wonderful. Fez is back. Don't change a bit. Keep the good work up, buddy. Way to go. Um, I'm going to ask you, Hicks. You, did you like the inner voice bit? I, like the, I think I liked the inner voice better yesterday. But do you like the uh, constant being mean to Fez thing that the inner voice does? And I think that's... A, a, an incredible amount of uh, either fart or shit stuff here. Yeah, I think that, that doesn't seem healthy. I don't know if I like that so much. Have you ever... Uh, did you call your shrink last night? Um, no, I sent, I sent him an email. I didn't call him. What the email say? I'm going to fucking get you. <laughs> I'm going to cut your hands and head off. And no one will be able to follow you. No, I was just, um, what I had sent was that the, the inner voice that we had talked about, that he tries, that he says what we need to do is not eliminate, but just quiet down. That I, you know, I said, seems like the wrong way to be going because the inner voice was actually helping yesterday. Well, so you saw yesterday as a big positive because you got some attention for it. Well, what ha I mean, it was, it, it, at the very least, I was, for one day, I was able to turn a negative into a positive, mm -hmm. where, because I've, when I freeze up and I'm not saying anything, I just hear that, you know, thing screaming at me to talk. What about this? You have Inner Voice saying People by Barbara Streisand. I could probably, uh, probably get out a line or two of that. Oh, the entire thing. People... People who need people are the luckiest people of all. That's all I know. People, people who need people are the luckiest people you'll know. Because people need people and people love people. People are the luckiest people of all. When you... And you talk to people, you'll find that people need other people. And they'll need them day to day. To have people in your lives keeps you alive. And people who need people are the luckiest of all. Andy, you're on the Ronnie Fez Show. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, uh, Ronnie, I just wanted to tell you first and foremost, I know I, we shouldn't shin kick around the holidays, but, man, uh, I came on to XM for Opie and Anthony, and I'm, I'm loving your show a lot better. I, just I, don't, like, I don't like that. That's never a compliment to me. Well, all right, I like you equally then, all right? <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah well, it's hey. not a fucking contest, but go ahead. All right, Fezzi, hey, I got a question for you. Um... If, uh, if Ronnie goes back into the hospital, heaven forbid, uh, will you at least send your inner voice there to visit him? I'm out. I didn't even want to make a big deal of this. I might have to go back in over the, um, over the break here. Um, my doctor's never seen this, but my appendix has grown back. What? The, I seem to have some kind of a freak thing where anything that's cut off of me grows back. Are you a lizard person? I don't know. But we even did oh. because we didn't know how it happened. And remember when I had the bandage on last week? Yeah. He had cut the tip of my uh, pinky off. And it's back and it's healthy whole. as ever. Yeah. And the doctor said he's never seen this before. But I can't be killed. And I don't Wait. know whether I should go into the military now or the CIA and become, you know, like some kind of a... Uh, Maybe. A killing machine for the government. Maybe get like a raincoat and right wrongs. Why well, do I got to wear a raincoat? A security guard or something. I don't want to be a security guard. Um, let's go over here to Josh. Josh Sherman Fez. Yeah. Hey, Fezzy. Yeah, I know you're in New York. You ever think about maybe like after the show, go join a comedy group or an improv group and doing gigs at night or open mics just to, to get the creative juices going again? And instead of going to a therapist... Go hang out with a bunch of comics or, or kids that want to be comedians. You know, get you out in the city, do some clubs. 
Vice show. What should Fez do? Uh, Potter, you're running Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, right. Fez, why don't you just take off from the show for a while, get your passion back. When I started listening to you guys, uh, it was because of you. I heard your voice and just thought your little comments were just hilarious. And uh, just this was like in 05 or whatever. You seem to be less and less interested in it. So just, I don't know, for yourself, go away for a while and then come back. Well, I've, I've been to the Nut Hut before. That didn't stick. Um, uh, I've got time off next week. Oh, I just talked to our program director. Oh, he wants God. us to work Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. What? Christmas Day is a Saturday. He wants us to do a live show yeah. on a Saturday? And I said, but, but sir, it's Christmas. But it's St. Crispin's Eve. And he said... Bah, humfuck. Whoa. And I go, why would you, what does that even mean? He goes, it's an XL channel. <laughs> Look it up. Well, he's fucking hardcore, isn't he? Yeah, he's hardcore. Bah, humfuck. We're Christmas fucking day. All right, we're going to break here. Uh, when we come back, Inner Voice is going to do Shakespeare for us. We'll pull out a sonnet. Uh, back uh, right after this jump.